What's going on, everybody? It is your humble YouTube live stream host, Tim, back with another stream. And tonight we are reaching out to all the introverts, all the lone wolves, all the weirdos, all the lonely hearts, basically anybody who doesn't have anything else to do tonight. You know, come on in, take your shoes off, leave the door slightly cracked in case another lone wolf wants to come in behind you. Come on in. We here. It's Friday afternoon, Friday evening, Friday night for some people. You got nothing to do. We can sit here. We can talk because we do this pretty much every day. We sit down. We talk. We get together. We see how everybody's day was. We check on each other. See what everybody's up to. We care here. It's love. We got Avery already. Dion, Man Against Machine, Lone Wolves Unite. Let's go. <laughs> Fred said, I saw weirdos. That's me. Um, Davis at Team INFJ. Let's go. Hey, Andy C. Darling, Mark. Oh, oh Alter Rob, you still watching last night's stream? You know, hey, we yeah, before you can get one, we come in with another one. You know, I th this is the day and age of content. We need content. Uh, love says introvert here. Uh, nothing to do tonight besides listen to you. Hey, come on in, come on in. I got nothing to do either. I got nothing to do either. I get it. I get it. I'm all three. Introvert, lone wolf, weirdo. I'm all three of those. There's other adjectives I could <laughs> lonely heart, all that. You know, mushroom man, C Bari, Lucinda. Hey, hey, hey. It's good to see so many weirdos like Angela. Um <laughs> hey, Marvel. Good to see you. Good to see you. Blessings. Blessings to you as well. Thank you. Yeah, I put that introvert signal. What would what would if you had to make a logo for like introverts, what would it be? Where's my book? Hold on. Stay. I'm not leaving, folks. I'm just getting my book because I want to write that down. I'm just getting my book. I, I, I'll give you so many great ideas, and I don't have my book, and I forget to write them down. Tonight, we write stuff down. What would an introvert logo look like? Oh, that'd be pretty cool. Get to, get to a good page, Tim. Introvert logo. Cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we write this stuff down. To, we write this stuff down tonight. Man against machine already hit. hit thank y'all. Hey, if everybody hits the like button right now, we get up to like 80 likes. That would be amazing. Um, thank y'all. Marcus, I just had an idea. I just had an idea. That's 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 what type of time you was on. Um, <laughs> what up, Lee? Core Olivia, check it in. Uh, the the T eight hundred. I I agree with that too. I love the fact that yeah, we can all be in different places doing different things on different devices, but we all can come in and connect and know that there's other people like us who will admit it. <laughs> I'm weird. I'm alone. You know, it, it's cool. It's cool. It's amazing. Austin and Ralph said, "Keep the streams coming. Makes the Uber eat shifts enjoyable." Nice, nice. What up, introvert rock star? Hey, did you just send me a message? Did you just send me a message, Introvert Rockstar? Um, if you did, I, I got you. After I was, I was going to wait and answer it after the stream, if that was you. Danny checking in. 74. Uh, Jamie, when I was at the YMCA in the, in the, during the wintertime when I didn't have a car, uh, I either took the taxi to town, which was like $15 each way, um, or I... Got a ride with somebody. Yeah, it, it's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You either got to wait until like they have a an employee shuttle going or get a ride. But, but there's a ton of people with cars. So you just got to find somebody with a car. And be like, hey, next time you go to town, I want to go. Because town is only like 10 minutes away. So, yeah. Rochelle, checking in. Corlivia, we, we pulled you away from Night in the Living Dead with your cat. Oh, okay. Okay, I feel like this is slightly better. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Hey, I called. I called. Hey, Janisa, welcome, welcome. Sorry I, if I'm skipping anybody. I, I just you know can't can't say hello to everybody. Um, but we in here. We in here. Miss Taffy dozed off during the last two lives. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is 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 that your your way of low key saying like? Let's get, let's get this thing going. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, that was you, Intro Ross. Okay. See, I'll be, I'll be reading. I got you. I got you. 
definitely uh, going to respond. Yeah. Yeah, we already had 100 people. Okay. Likes is looking good. Thank you. We didn't make 80, but we close. Ian, you were just watching the video about being an introvert? It is, it is interesting. Hey, love you too, Spinning Wheels. It is interesting how much like introvert content is starting to come out. Um, I feel like there was a time when nobody was like, I'm an introvert. You know, we just, I wouldn't even say suffered in silence. We suffered the weird looks and stuff people used to say in silence. But now I think more and more people realize like, bro, it's just a thing. Like you're extroverted, I'm introverted. It's okay. Hey, introvert rock star. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat squad. I appreciate that. So thank you for your advice on life. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for the love. And uh, like I said, I'm definitely going to tap in with you after the stream and respond and, and, you know, anyway, I can help you with that question. Yeah. We, yeah. I got you. Thank you. Super chat squad. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Had Rose at weirdo. Okay. <laughs> Uh, oh, Miss Tavi, you be working. It takes your energy away, and you just doze off once you get to the house. I'm the same way. Um, I'm the same way. Like I'll be watching something, and I I get mad when it's something I really like. Like if I'm watching a game, I really want to watch, and I doze. I get so mad because like once I start dozing, I'm done. Like I can't undoze. You know what I mean? Unless I go eat like a bunch of sugar or something. But yeah, once once I start this, it's done. I have to just turn the game off. Like I'll watch it tomorrow, which isn't fun, you know. I get it, I get it. Uh spinning wheels, it's all good, man. It's all good. I appreciate you coming back through and, and, and saying that. It's all good. It's all good. We good. It's love. It's love. Tory, Raz, New Patriots, Collins. Lee says, I think cell phones are making us an introvert. Maybe, maybe. I think cell phones definitely make it easier to be an introvert. Um, so Dion coming through. Coming through. Thank you. Let me put a like on that. Thank you, Dion. Super Chat Squad. That is a love. Said just 39 more points. Caitlin Clark, you got this. Yeah, man. Caitlin, you know, it was crazy. Uh, I thought it was so cool that Caitlin Clark had a decent game this last game. Um, who'd they play? Who'd they play? Uh, I watched so many games. Whoever they played. Um, but like Hannah Stokey had an amazing game. Like I would, like it was like you knew Iowa was probably gonna win. So I was just kind of like, yeah. You know, it was cool, but when Hannah Stokey started going crazy, I was like, happy like Hannah, go! I was beating the bed. Um, yeah, so yeah, Caitlin going to be the all-time leading scorer soon, hopefully in the in NCAA. Not in women's college basketball, because there's other there's another thing they used to have that it's a higher. But in the NCAA, soon she's going to pass Kelsey Plum. I think that's amazing. Hey, Natasha, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the generous support. The weirdo's coming through. No, thank you, Natasha. Said, hey, Tim, hey, introvert family, we in here. We in here. I'm telling you, I'm going to draw up like an introvert logo. That would be a cool T-shirt. Um, thank you so much, Natasha. Uh, it's good to see you. I appreciate the continued support. Thank you. Thank you, introvert fam. Travis, hello. Oh, you got the notification? Wow. The, the Gratitude Gorilla is technically a pet, I guess. I guess. It's a, it's a service animal. Okay. Um... That's, I shouldn't joke about service animals. I got to say this. Um, I was on a flight recently, and they had the biggest dog. And I was like, here we go. To those people credit, that was the nicest dog. I forgot he was on the – they were like two rows ahead of me on the other side of the plane. I forgot the dog was there. Like, it had its own seat. I think I, they, I, they were talking to him before they were getting on, and I think they were like, hey, you got a seat for the dog, right, because it's so big. Forgot the dog was on the plane. It was so quiet. Um, in some way, when the flight was over, they were like, he must fly a lot. They're like, yeah, we, we've had him on flight since he was, you know, a baby. He's like, yeah, that dog was cool. The funny thing is, it was a couple. It was like a, a younger couple, probably in their late 20s. The dude took the dog and made the girl take all the luggage. <laughs> so him and the dog were like running through the airport. And they kept having to stop and wait on the girl. And she was dragging. I'm like, give the girl the dog. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Uh, what's up? We just kind of going off the dome, you know, whatever, whatever the, you know, the introverts, lone wolves and weirdos want to talk about. Let's go. You know, we always find something. Erica Jean, homebody and homebodies. Welcome to. Welcome to. We here. Retired 2019. How you doing? 
Uh, Meat Puppet. I love that name. I haven't made a regular video in a while. Um, I'll be honest. These days, I'm just more passionate about and have more desire just to do these streams. Um, so I, I just like the interaction, man. I like talking with y'all. What up, Tia? I just like talking to y'all. You know what I mean? So, like, I understand. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to still do videos. But, like, there's just – when I do a video, it's just me. If I do a live stream, it's us. And so, you know, someone who's always alone like myself, I enjoy that interaction. It's not the same with a video, you know? Sean said, all three. <laughs> Oblivion weirdo gang. Uh, D Mina, I got, I got the 49ers. So we'll see. James Bond is introvert. He'd be having a lot of companions, but maybe they don't stay long. Um, a lot of his friends end up dead too. So Simi, what up? Lone Wolf Ambervert. Okay, Ambervert's welcome to. Ambervert's are welcome to. Do I think the Grim Reaper is an introvert? Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think the Grim Reaper picked the profession she picked? I don't really want to deal with people, but like if I got to, I just want to deal with them in a real short period of time. You know, for about five seconds when I come get them. You know, when I show up, I don't have to talk too long, you know. Womb to tomb, let's go. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Appreciate the, the look at the birch. Uh, JB, I do not have kids. Rig man, how you doing? Carol checking in. Carol's here. Okay, what up, Carol? I do not have kids, uh, JB, no. Domina, you, you place a little bet on the 49ers? Okay, okay. I, uh, I was going to bet on the 49ers. I was going to place a little bet, a little, little, little wager. Then I watched a couple of videos about the, the sports betting situation. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Um, I just learned some stuff about, like, I, I was surprised that, like, and I didn't really pay, I, I noticed it, but I didn't pay much attention how just out of nowhere there's been all this sports betting stuff on TV. And I didn't realize they passed like a, it was like 2018 but they passed a law saying states could legalize sports betting and stuff like that online and stuff like that. And so that's why you're seeing all this stuff. But as we know, you know, gambling, you know, there's people who struggle with like gambling addiction and all that. And like the more prep, like I just watched a documentary and I was like, I don't even want to take part in that. Like if me and one of my friends went to bet, cool. But I was like, I'm not putting one of them apps on my phone. I'm not going to the, the sports bet. I'm like, I don't even want to be a part of that after that. So yeah, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with betting. I'm just saying, after I saw that, I was like, I don't want nothing to do with the maps. There's something very mysterious about being an introvert. I think so. I think so. Julie's an introvert. Yeah. I'm See, I love it. I tell you, 10 years ago, we wouldn't have been this honest, I feel like. But now we got each other. Well, that's a good point. James Bond's a man of few words, has no friends, always on the job. But he meets a lot of people on the job, though, I feel like. I feel like if he was really an introvert, it'd be a very boring movie. <laughs> it, would, it would just be him sitting in his hotel room for, you know, an hour and a half. And then he'd, like, kill two people. Movie would be over. Um, but I see your point. You, you, make a, you make a good point there, sir. Hamza, how you doing? Flat Earth Victory is in here. Our, our weekly dose of Flat Earthers. How you doing? How you doing? What's up, Dana? I don't, I don't know if me being an introvert intimidates other people. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Like, I've never had anyone be like, you're intimidating me. I don't know if intimidated is the word I'd use, but I think sometimes people don't know how to take me. But I don't know if they're intimidated. Meat Puppet says, I'm a PM and I go to the office three times a week. I can see why people say the system is raised because introverts. Is this the first time I'm seeing company culture up close? Oh, okay. Okay. Do you, do you think the system is rigged against introverts in, in the corporate culture? 
Julie has one friend. Hey, all you really well, it'd be nice to have three or four friends, but if you got one good friend, that's Lee, like I'm not I'm not a I'm an introvert, but you say I don't seem like one a person because I know you. Like whenever you see me, I'm at, like, like it's me and you hanging out, or I'm at the Y. So what do you have? When I'm at the Y around my friends, like I'm around my friends. But like you you know, like I'm at the Y, I go to we go to dinner, I hang out, but then I go to my room and I don't hang out with anybody till the next day. So like, yeah, you catch me at the Y. When you see me, I'm a seem outgoing because that's all my people up there. But they'll tell you, like, I used to be like, I can hang out one day a week, one night a week. Excuse me. So I'm like, you know, after work, come five o'clock, I'm in my room. So I'm like, tell me what night y'all doing something really cool. I'll come out Tuesday. Y'all playing basketball? Bet. I'll be there. I'm probably just gonna watch, but I'll be there. I'm like, Wednesday through Monday, don't bother me then after work, you know? So it's, it's like when it's, when it's, Hangout time, I'm hang out and I'm loud, but as soon as that's over, boom, I'm in my show, you know. Appreciate all these comments. Oh, the likes are looking great. We already had 90 likes. Thank y'all. Chris says, I can see who I really am when I'm alone. Facts, facts. I think there's, I had a good quote and I didn't write it down. I told my dad, he's like, that's good. I think there's some. Things you can only find out about yourself alone. And I think there's some things we can only like fix about or fix about ourselves around other people. You know what I mean? I think you got to be alone to really learn some things about yourself, but I think you got to get around other people to make sure that the stuff you believe is true is true. You know what I mean? Like if you're always around other people. I don't think you have that alone time that allows you to really get to know yourself. But if you're always by yourself, we can get delusional. So I think you need to get around other people and they'll let you know if, what you know what I mean? Like you take context clues, social cues, context, like, okay, you learn some stuff about yourself. You get around other people. They'll let you know if it's true. Like if you can try to work on yourself when you get around other people, they'll let you know, like, oh man, you know, you can just tell like, oh, they, I changed this up about myself. I grew in this area. People are more receptive. You know, so I think it takes a both, a balance of both of like being alone and also being around other people. Uh, and I think we have to figure out for each one of us what the balance is. I don't think it's 50-50. It could be like 80-20 or 30-70. Or but I think we need a mixture of both to like be healthy as a human, totally healthy. DHM said, people think you're arrogant. You're just introvert. But that can happen. That can happen. Yeah, because you just keep it to yourself. Be like, who you think he is? And Rand said, if we got to talk, make it short and sweet. Oh, where was that? Er, er. Oh, hey, Anthony, glad you're liking the stream. Flat Earth Victory doesn't even have a dog. Is You don't have a dog. Is that is that a flat Earth thing, or you just don't have a dog? You don't want the dog to run off the side of the Earth, or you just don't? Okay. Um, I love how we're, we're going over all these fictional characters and talking about whether they're introverts or not. That's why we're weirdos. Okay. <laughs> That's why we're weirdos. It's like, I think Tarzan's an introvert. Like, bro, Tarzan? You know, they keep coming out with Tarzan movies. Who was watching these Tarzan movies? When was the last time you thought about Tarzan? Who was watching these Tarzan movies? Every time I turn around, I'm like, another, is it really that? Is he that popular? Tart? Like, okay, moving on. Robert 222 is a total introvert. Gotcha. Gotcha. Alex, good to see you. Robert don't like people in general. He starts off with the don't like it. Takes a while to warm up to people. I get that. I get that. Erica Jean, they've called you strange, arrogant, and out of touch. So you need to snap out of it. Yeah, like, and that's some of the stuff I'm saying. Like, we've had to deal with this stuff. I think people are learning more about introverts now. But over the years, we've had to deal with people trying to change who we are. It's like, I'm not hurting nobody. I just don't talk as much as you want me to. I just don't want to be around y'all 24-7. Why do I need to snap out of that? No one ever tells an extrovert that. Snap out of it, you know? Like, extrovert is an accepted behavior. 
introvert for so long hasn't been, but I think it's becoming more accepted, you know. Thomas is going to save up money, trade Forex. Hey, 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 sounds cool. Sounds cool. Do your research. Do your research. You know, at Forex, they say easy to lose it. But if you figure it out, go for it. Top five hip-hop artists dead or alive? Um, Eminem. Lil Wayne. Jadakiss. These are ones I like. Cameron. Um, who's another one? Who's got bars? Um, we'll say Styles P because I can't think of another one. I'm sure there's others, but that's just off the top of my head list. Oh, Robert, you drink that? Yeah, it was on sale. It was like two of these for five bucks. So I bought them. And the lady at the store is like, oh, I like Fiji water. It's just so expensive. I'm like, they on sale, girl. Go get you some. Go get you some. Boomers watch Tarzan, do they? Do they? Boomers is on Facebook now. They don't be watching movies. They on Facebook. Theo walked around all day by yourself. That sounds like a fun day. I, 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 that's a fun day. The, intro, the difference between introverts and being lonely? I mean, I feel like introverts are less lonely a lot of times than other people. Well, when we're alone, we're less likely to be lonely. I'll say that. Because you can be an introvert and be very lonely. But like when we're alone, we can be alone, I think, more and not be as lonely as someone else who is alone that much. But introverts get lonely too, you know? Hey, what up, GMAC? Answering the call. Yeah, Ken. Ken, yeah. Everest is... I didn't realize until talking with some people or... I think Joe Budden's interviewed some somebody who climbed Everest or Kate, one of them. Um, and, like, so many people in the guy's party... Like, he didn't go to the top because something told him not to keep going. And, like, so many people did. And, like, like five people died. On 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 who went on the that climb with him, and I was like, it's like that, because the dude was just like, bro, like they went up, and then you just wait, and they never come back, and then eventually you just gotta call it, and like no one ever finds their body, and he was like, it's it's a mine. I was like, why is crazy, bro? But yeah, I was like, man, who climbs these mountains? Sarah says Rick Ross has the most unique bars of any rapper. Okay, I, I I respect that. I respect that. I I, I respect that. Hey, Jackson M, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Said uh, a few years ago, I found you through your videos on Season Work Nomadic Life, and they absolutely put me on a new path for the better. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Ooh. Oh, I love to hear that. Love to hear that. I love to hear that. Uh, appreciate you sharing that. Uh, I feel so blessed to be able to play a part. It, you know, in that. So glad you're happy. Like that's, bro. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. That is awesome. Boy, that's, that's mm, I love that. Love that. Love that. Yeah, passive. The 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 dimmick of the pan rolled around. I got to sit at the house. I will admit, I did. I almost lost it a couple times in 2020, just because it was like mandated that I be at the house. So this was an example of. I got more recharge time than I needed because it's like, I say I'm probably like 70, 30. So I want 70% of the time I want to be alone. 30% of the time I want to be around some people. So I wasn't getting my 30%. So there were times I literally nine, nine 30 at night had to, and I hadn't left the house in days. I would just get up and walk around town. I was living in Bozeman at the time. I would just get up yeah, usually I don't be out at night walking around stuff, but it's Bozeman. So I would just get up and walk around like on the empty streets, you know, just to get out the house. I was like, I can't do this. Like the, 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 when, when we were like really on lockdown, lockdown and Bozeman opened back up pretty quickly. So I started being able to at least go places and be around people. But we first were really, it got to me because I wasn't getting my 
people time, you know, it's kind of crazy. But I know there are a lot of people who are like, man, I ain't got to go to work. I ain't got to talk to nobody. Even if I go somewhere, I'm covered up. Oh, I loved it. Some people loved it. Some people loved it. Is true love real? I think so. I think so. Um, I think so. Like, how could it be fake? Like, true love, by definition, if it's true love, then it's real. Is all love true love? I don't know. But true love is definitely real. There definitely is a difference between being alone and being lonely. Um, but sometimes I think we, some people try to use that to say, if you like being alone, you're never lonely. And I, I as someone who likes being alone, I still get lonely sometimes, you know? Yeah, great reset. I know, I know Rick Ross was a correctional officer. That don't, you know, that ain't gonna sway me. Like I got, friends that are correctional officers i got friends that are cops so like that don't mean nothing to me like i i it's a you know what i mean like I, that that don't that's like saying he was a baker like it don't it's a job you know what i mean so yeah i'm not one of those people who's anti-co anti-cop so like some of my best like legit some of my best friends in the world are cops so like yeah what up lawrence you, you're all three jeffrey okay i see you i see you Hey, Alvin Anthony, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Super Chat Squad, we're here. So yes, Tim, the less friends, the better. <laughs> hey, Tim, the less friends, the better. Um, for some people, yeah. I Like, I I personally, I keep a tight circle, but, like, if if I find new friends that are good friends, I'll, you know what I mean? I personally, I'm a big believer in friends. So, so I don't know if I'd say the less friends, the better. But I, I only want true friends around me. I'll say that. So some people just, as many people want to hang out, cool. But I do think I'm with you on like only having, you're probably only going to have a small number of good friends in life. So I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Super Chat Squad. Thank you. Thank you. Bro, we're going to stop with the, let me not even, any any comments about, we can we we can discuss the 2020 and the demic of the pan, but any comments about like that type of stuff for the future, I'm a block because like don't nobody need to hear that, in my opinion. Hey EJ, what up, what up, what up? It's Bellum. <laughs> Rochelle said that pandemic traffic was awesome. Yeah, Lee, we saw each other. Lee, we saw each other in Bozeman, right, right when it first started happening. Right when it first started happening, we saw each other. I was filming a video. I was filming a video. Talk about how scared I was, and Lee walked past me. He looked more scared than me, if, if we're being honest. Lee looked more scared than me. He was terrified. He was he was in a state. Um, no, I'm joking. I was I was shook. Like I actually every now and then I go back and watch that video just to see my face when I recognize it. I'm like, there's no, there's my boy, where are you going? Uh, Ken, I, I, I don't know if I would say I like these days I'm alone days at a time. Like I'm like the only people I interact with when I'm just like by myself like this at Airbnb or something is like people at the store. But I like, like when I had a roommate, I enjoy, like, I like having someone in my day every day. I just don't need to be them. I just don't need to be around them a lot. You know, so like I said before, like when I had a roommate, some days we wouldn't hang out for days. And then we might sit in the living room and talk for three or four hours. We might go grab something to eat. And then it might be four days before we did anything more than be like, what's up? You know, so but it was cool to have somebody in the house. So I like interacting with people daily. I just don't need a lot of it. Um, Dana said, can you talk about the fear of never finding love? I think that's a very real fear. And it's getting even worse these days. Um, we've never been lonelier. We've never been less loved. You know, if we're being honest, I, I think as a whole, we've never been less loved. There's never been more disbelief in love, I feel like. Um, 
and 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 there is the fear of like i'm never going to find anybody that loves me for me i'm never going to find my person my soulmate and and it's tough like you know what i mean to think like hey i might spend my whole life and while i might do all this other cool stuff you are missing something and i'm speaking from someone who's single right now has been single for years i feel like you are missing something if you don't find that however with that being said you still can live a good life without finding romantic love. Um, I always say that now, if you have no friends or anybody, that's different. But I think sometimes we downplay how important our friends are and the love we get from them because we're looking for romantic love. So for me, I go to gratitude and I'm grateful for the love I do have. I have some very good friends. I love them. They love me. We tell each other, love you, bro. Love you. You know, like, boom. Would it be nice to find romantic love too? Yes, but if that doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. Like I can, it's womb to womb to tomb. I just got to get from womb to tomb. If God, if the universe allows me to have true love of a romantic nature, in that cool. But if not, well, like I can still have a great life and find love in the areas I can find it. You know, so that's the way I look at it. It's like, I can't, who's letting off fireworks? I can't just like write life off because I don't have romantic love or just, you know, live in, in just this place of just like despair because I think I might never find it. Even though it is one of those like, ha, ah, I try to just, hey, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Where, you know, what can I do with this life? You know what I mean? But I, I, you know, I think more and more people, you know, that's that's a real fear. What up, basket space ball? Um, I just think it's different there. It's okay. Yes, I am good. I talked to him the other day. He's good. He's good. Explore is a weirdo. Okay. Great reset, two years celibate, feel great. Okay. Yeah, Lee, I, I think I'm with you. I probably, I made some really good friends at Big Sky, but I probably made more friends and definitely of all age groups at, at, at the YMCA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, why is it a special place, man? I'm always going to say that. Uh, Mecca said, my husband and I are both introverts. We have our own wing of the house, and we come out to cook and chat and watch a film maybe here and there. Other than that, get away from me. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I like that. I like that setup. I like that setup. You know, I like that setup. I come through, hang out, whatever. Then I'm going back to my wing. Hold on. I got to go read something just to make sure I'm not. Okay. I gotta check on something. Okay, cool. See me in my fifties. Ooh, like that. Like the way he set that up. Said I have you companionship the same way I have you eating food. I don't need to do it all the time, but you need it sometimes. Yeah, you need it from time to time. You don't need to do it all the time. Yeah. Zick said the old men in the retirement homes are having a ball. From what I hear, I mean the women too. No need to worry. Facts. Facts. You know. My name's Alone Wolf. Kashif, I definitely, there's so many areas where I'm like, it would be nice to have a woman in my life for this. So many times. I'd be like, man, like, or I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to need, y'all hear me. I'll be like, I'm going to fix that when I find a, a partner. Like, it'll, it'll take a woman being like, mm, maybe you should regularly clip the hair in your ears. You know, clip, the, you know what I mean? Some stuff that like, as a single man, I was like, whatever. I'm I'm excited for the prospect of a woman coming to my life and being like, nah, you got to change that because then I'll change it. But just me, I'm like, I don't care. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, yeah. All the time. I'm like, man, it was nice to and the affection, the nurturing, cuddle time, you know, all this, all the things. But it's like. There's a in, there's a endless number of things we can identify. Oh, it'd be nice to have that. 
so it's like, while I can identify, oh, that'd be nice. I also realize that like, I'm okay too, if that doesn't happen, you know what I mean? I'm chilling now, but there are some things that I'm like, yeah, you know, one would, that'd be cool. Uh, Red, I played like Age of Empires 2 from the 90s, or early 2000s. I don't really play like video games, like console games or nothing. Um, yeah, I'm not really a gamer. Sherry would have a boyfriend if you only had to see them once a week. I, I, all my, my past relationships were long distance. We saw each other on the weekends. They lived like an hour, hour and a half away. I, yeah, I like that. I like that. Hey, Kev, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Explore that. And I think that it, you you hit the nail on the head. Like a support group, a support system is important. You know what I mean? And I think like that's one of those, those some of those things that some things in life you need other people to help you with, even if it's just telling it to somebody. I don't care who you are. Some stuff you go through, you it, it's better just sh you know what do they say? A burden shared is is a burden halved or whatever. Like sometimes just being able to tell someone who you know cares about you helps. Most times. Even if they don't give you any advice, like, bro, I just need to tell, run this past you. When you don't have that, life is harder. And, like, I think that's why we're social creatures. It's in our DNA. It's in our makeup. When you don't have that, when you don't have someone you can go to and talk to, or even we like to be the person people talk to. I think that's part of it all, too. So it's like when you don't have anyone to talk to or that can talk to you, like, you just... There's something missing. There's definitely something missing. We don't have that. I agree. Lee, I don't have any summer plans yet. No, no. I'm trying to figure them out. I don't have any yet. If I get a woman, she's not going to want me to be a rambling man. We can ramble together. I keep saying I'm looking for travel, buddy. We can ramble together. Let's go. And I wouldn't get with a woman who didn't respect my lifestyle. Just like I wouldn't want her to get with me if I didn't respect her lifestyle. So like, Stuff like that doesn't bother me. Like, people say, oh, you get a woman, she won't. Like, any woman who's going to want to get with me that I'm going to want to get with, obviously, we're going to, like, understand each other's lifestyle. Or why would we even, you know, you know? Oh, we, we, oh, we can talk about the proper water intake here? Okay, okay, okay. Elena Mon says, "The more I stay in my own lane, pe the uh, people. The more I stay in my own lane, people gravitate towards me. Uh, people, are, people gravitate towards authenticity. You know, I'm a firm believer in that. When you're like doing you, people like that because there's so many fake people out there. So yeah, that that, that I can see that happening. There's a store giving out free dumplings if you got dumped or broke up for Valentine." How do you prove it? You just walk in there and be like, I got dumped. Where's my dumplings? I wouldn't trust. I don't trust free dumplings. I'm just going <laughs> to. Bro, that don't even sound like, hey, can I have my free dumplings? I'm not doing that. I don't trust that. I don't trust that. Shout out to them for the for the promotion. I don't trust that, though. Is it free dumplings with a purchase of baby back ribs? Or, like, is it just free? You just walk and get free dumplings. I don't trust that. That seems weird to me. Where are you from? <laughs> that seems weird to me. Oh, I like that long writer said, I think as we pro uh, progress in modern times, single people, nomads, solo travelers, et cetera, will become more and more popular. And with that, ways of connecting will evolve to suit. I, I like that. I like that. I agree with that. I mean, you know, things always go to balance. So, yeah, as we get more disconnected, we'll find new ways to connect because, like, we'll have to. You know, we'll have to. Ooh, Lee, you might go to Alaska this summer. Go, go. You should do that. I'm sure, like, if I know one thing about you, Lee, you're going to be back doing something seasonal soon. Yeah. What up, Aaron? Long time no see. We here. Oh, you got to prove it with a text map? I don't trust that. Nope, nope, no, that's too easy. And they said, I put on my dating profile, I'm looking for a long-term relationship for mostly every other weekend. 
Uh, is it causing a rush? I can believe that. They're like, he don't, nah, nah, nah. He, he weirdo. No, I'm joking. Hey, Kashif. Hey, wound the tomb, brother. Wound the tomb. Yeah, that, that has been a very freeing outlook for me. That's why I like sharing it. Um, it may not be for everyone, but like I know for me, it's so, so many, you know, before things would happen, I just get so wrapped up in them. And they were so serious and so important. Now things may happen and like they affect my life. But when I get, when I calm down and go back to womb to tomb, I'm like, oh, I just got to make it through, bro. Like it takes a lot of the pressure off. I don't have to achieve nothing. I don't have to re reach a certain level of success. People don't have to agree with how I live my life. I just got to get wound to tomb, and I personally want to do it following my moral code and try to uplift and spread love the whole way. That's it. That's it. That's it. Three more roses. I, I get it. So why do people think I'm weird for being 34, no kids and a wife? But most of these people have kids out of wedlock explanation. You know what I mean? I, I, that's, that's, you know, a lot of people had kids out of wedlock. There were a mistake. I was watching a video today and there was a kid in his 20s who had already had like two kids. And he's like, it's better to have kids when you're young instead of when you're old. But the dude didn't have no job. Oh, well, he mean, it didn't appear like he had a job because he was running them streets. I was just like, well, if that's the logic, you know, I, you know, yeah, I, I, you know, if you, you say, hey, I don't want to have kids, that's a bad choice. But if you have five people like, mm, maybe not five, but if you have three people are like, mm. even if you can't take care of people are like, mm. but if you have none, it's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Error, how's it going? Uh, Ruby, if I was a solo female traveler, I would probably have the same safety measures in place that I have as a solo male traveler. You know? I'm a big believer. And it's I always tell people the same safety measures you use in your everyday life is the same ones you use traveling. You know? You know, but like we are, most, for the most part, we already know, you know, how to be safe. You know, keep your head on your swivel. Be aware of your surroundings. You know, don't tell random strangers too much about you. You know what I mean? Like we already kind of know what to do to, to stay as safe as possible. And like you just do that in different places as opposed to just doing it at home. There's really not a lot different I do when it comes to staying safe. And I don't think there's a big men and women both do the same thing. I feel like I don't think there's anything extra a woman does to stay safe that that than I do. I think it's about the same game. Um, at least the women. Solo travels I've talked to, they, you know, they say the same thing. I'm careful of my surroundings. You know, I don't I don't be hanging out with strange men, strange people. You know, what I mean, like I just you know, I think it's all the same. It's the same safety measures, I think. Yeah, Lee. Oh, yeah, totally. They tax your paycheck and then they tax the stuff you buy. You know, um, I pay my taxes. No complaints. Sometimes if I go somewhere like Estes Park, like Colorado has a high like state like taxes when you buy stuff. Um, when I'm other places and I come back to Colorado and I go to check out and I'm like, where did I? that gets to me sometimes? Regular taxes like you pay the IRS. I don't mind. But like the little state and local tax and all this other tax when I buy something, that's kind of crazy. Hey, appreciate it. Spinny was like, Tim, you got that Riz. Okay, okay, okay. I feel you. Sideline, how you doing? Said so you're the, ult the ultimate introvert. I, I do think for a lot of people, the pandemic. I think a lot of us are going through some 
low-key post-pandemic trauma. PPDT, not P PTSD, is PPDT, post-pandemic uh, trauma. You know, so I think some things like introversion possibly, or just others got, I don't want to say worse because introversion isn't bad, but I think some of us who already were introverted got kind of even more reserved, you know? Just, just different behaviors from a lot of people I've talked to. You can see a line to where like their life, you know what I mean? Where like their behavior deviated 2020-ish, you know? Hey, thanks for asking. Uh, Lee, I'm hoping Greyhound doesn't have to happen, but you know, if it, hey, I've always said if I had the right Greyhound, I will, but I'm hoping it doesn't happen. Yeah. Just visiting your reality. I, Jim Rohn said this, the motivational speaker. And he was like, if you, and I probably should use this philosophy when I'm checking out and they text me, but why I don't mind regular taxes is like, he's like, if you get work, if you get wrapped up about how much you hate taxes every year, when tax time comes around, you're going to have a problem with it. But he was like, if you focus on where that money goes, the roads, the cops, the fire department, you know, whatever, if you pay more taxes, that means you made more money. So, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I incorporated that. I'm just like, you know, what? instead of me always being, oh, I'm just like, Hey, this in theory uh, keeps the country running. I don't mind paying it. As a citizen, I don't mind paying. And since then, I haven't really cared about paying my taxes. Like, you know, when I see the amount I have to pay, I'm like, but, you know, it's like, hey, you know, this is what I got to do to have roads and, you know, whatever. So I just try not to dwell on it. Yeah. Hey, you've been feeling like a strange one most of your life. People say when you were a kid, there's something strange about you. I mean, some of us just different, you know. There's some people who fit in great in society. So there's gonna be people on the other end of the spectrum who just never I don't think it's a bad thing, you know. It kind of is when you want to like vibe with people and it's kind of different, but it's just who you are, you know. You know, the, the problem with the with the strange people is like a lot of times we don't meet up. You know what I mean? Because kind of just start doing your own thing. And so it's harder for like the the people on the, you know, the fringes to come together. Um, but it's cool. You can meet somebody else. Yeah, always been weird, too. You know. Long, long rider, your, your your family line stop, stops with you. You're not quite sure how you feel about that. I get that. I get that. Um, if if family line is something that's very important to you or important to you, I could see where you're like, man, that's kind of, um, I you know, for me, yeah, I just don't really care. Like, and I don't think my family really cares. You know what I mean? No one's ever been like, no, no one's ever said that to me. But also, like, it's not their choice. So, but yeah, I get that. I could see how that being concerned. Um, yeah, for me, it just never, I think, you know. Uh, Moon Wolf Dog. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Moon Wolf Dog. Dot five. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad. I appreciate the love. Mic drop. Let's go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we got a Super Chat Train. Jeremy's Closet here. Hey, hey, hey. Jeremy's Closet coming through. Said Super Chat Train. Hi, Tim. Love, love, love. I love that you respond to my messages and questions in the comments. It builds the bond, bro. Kombucha on me. K. Hey, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm I, I try to respond to comments. People have a question. If I'm reading the comments and someone has a question and something I can answer, I definitely try to, you know, respond, answer it. Um, I definitely never want to be one of those creators who is just like, I make a video, I drop it, no engagement, you know, or I do a stream and the whole stream, I'm just me talking. Nah, like it's about, get like I get so much from the interaction. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate the love. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Moondog. They out there shooting off fireworks. Why? Why? Thank y'all so much. 
Alfonso checking in. Amber Vert checking in. Uh, Ricky, if yeah, if you had to block somebody you're close to on social media because they were messing with your mental health, first off, good on you for prioritizing your mental health. But that it is normal to feel guilty. Yes, it's normal. Because that person you, you're close is your friend, family member, whatever, you're close to them. So it kind of feels like you're pushing them away. But like, for one thing, social media isn't real life. So you can still be close. You just don't have to listen to them do whatever on Facebook. You know what I mean? It'd be different if you were like, we're never talking again. But like, it's just, you know, social media. So yeah, but it is normal to feel guilty. Yes. Which is what people play on a lot of times to get people to not block them or stop talking to them, you know. But like I said, props to you for being like, nah, it ain't worth it. Hey, we got a, the, the super chat train continues. Oh, and by the way, Jeremy, yeah, definitely com some kombucha on you. Yes, definitely. Uh, Zick coming through. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat squad, super chat train. Here we go, here we go. And we got Raz Bliss coming through at the end. Thank you, Raz. That is love. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate that. Thank y'all. It's love. We hear, we hear weirdo love. <laughs> Introvert lone wolf weirdo love. We are here together. Thank y'all so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. Raz, you going to bed? You said, uh, see you later? Okay, cool, cool, cool. See you later. Thank you again. Lee, I definitely enjoy the mountains. Um, I can go to the city and hang out. Um, but yeah, the mountains feel like home. Yeah. YOLO, you said it might be the, the, the lunar New Year's? I don't know. Uh, sideline. I don't. I don't have a car currently. No, no, no. I'm good. We straight. It it will be a while before I get a car. Like I, I just don't. Yeah. You know, like what would I do in a car? You know what I mean? I kind of like being able to just hop on a plane, go. So you know what I mean? Like I just don't. There's a lot that when you live my lifestyle, there's a lot that goes with having a car. If you're not wanting to like road, like especially in the winter time, because like snows. You know what I mean? Like just. If you're not wanting to road trip, you know, I'm 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 enjoying letting Delta take care of the travel. Them 10 hour, eight hour, six hour trips between cities, you know, after years, you get, you know what I mean? Like you, you know the day's gonna come when it's your turn to break down on the side of the interstate, halfway to your destination. You know what I mean? Like it's just a lot that I'm like, I'm chilling. I'll let Delta take care of it now. Have I ever done Mardi Gras? Lots of fire now. Nah, I'm not. Y'all you know me. I'm I'm pretty. Back when I was partying, I never got too caught up in the occasion. I was just wanting to drink and chase women. So fireworks were never my thing. I never saw the point. Ollie, we here. We here. Global Vagabond said, I saved my report cards from childhood. My teachers made it clear. That I was introverted and preferred to be anywhere instead of a crowded classroom. It was a crime of the century. Exactly. Like they wrote that in the margins, like it was a bad thing. Doesn't want to be in class. Like that's a, okay. Okay. What are we doing here? Hey, just waiting. Thank you. Thank you. Just visiting. Excuse me. Just excuse me. Just visiting. Um, it's not letting me see the whole uh, uh username, but just visiting. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat squad, super chat train. We're here. It says this is for all those listening, but don't have it to give. Hey. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, all the lone wolves, weirdos, and introverts. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can give you a boom. Give you a like on that. Thank you so much. That was, that was very thoughtful. Thank you. Thank you. What is it? Will it show me? I'm trying to wait for it to show me the full username. Appreciate that generous uh, contribution. Thank you. Uh. Bargain Bear said, do you know any hotels or Airbnbs with amazing views out the windows? I'm sure there's lots. Um, I, I, The one I stayed at, well, I wasn't in an Airbnb. Well, this hotel uh, in Myrtle Beach, the ones on the beach have a really nice view. It'd be hard to tell you about them, but there are lots of Airbnbs with good views, but like it'd be hard to tell you. You know what I mean? Like how would I... Not to mention, I got my master list 
of places I stay, but I'm holding on to it. I'm holding on to I'm holding on to my master list. I'm not telling nobody about the places I stay at, respectfully. Um, you know, you, you tell people about them, then they're going to be booked. So, you know. Uh, oh, the, man, the, 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 the love is coming through tonight. Wow, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. I said, keep cool content live, donation, choo choo. Hey, 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 we're going to let. Like I, I I enjoy doing these streams, and now that I found out people enjoy watching them, and and there's not too many uh, doing them every day, I'm we here, we here, we here. Thank you, John. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Greg, coming through. Greg Powers, I appreciate the continued support. Really appreciate it, Greg. Greg, just come through, drop all bags. You know the silent assassin. We here. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. I know that makes no sense to say silent assassin draw, but it makes sense in my head. Greg, that is love. Thank you so much. Choo choo, super chat train. Holly coming on the train too. How long's the train? Let's go. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you, Holly. That is heart. That is love. Let me give you heart. So my mood is instantly lifted when I join these chats. Thank you and much love, everyone. Yes, yes. This is it's community. Like it's energy. I firmly believe like you can feel the energy. Like I tell you, these these streams do so much for me because it'll just be me sitting around the house. You know, sit around Airbnb, which is cool, but but I get on here and it's just like I feel the love, I feel the energy, definitely feel the support. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Man, we it's love and abundance. I'm talking to gratitude gorilla. It's abundance, bro. You're missing out. You should have been over here. You're you're weirdo too, sir. Okay. Um, want to get back to some of these comments. Thank y'all so much. A said, how old were you when you start to realize you were outside the norm? What was it? Uh, I was one of those um, elementary school kids that the teachers talked about. Yes. But I think my third grade teacher was like, you're different than the other kids. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was only a pretty smart kid. I had a lot of friends, you know, but I was just a little different. Like the other kids just went along. Excuse me. You know, like I just was always like, I think it was. Fifth grade, I wrote in block letters. I refused to write regular letters. Like everything was block letters. It might have been fourth grade, but everything was block letters. I don't know why. I just refused to write regularly. Wouldn't do it. Would not do it. It didn't matter how many letters. Because like they'd send letters home. My mom would be like, well, is he doing his work? And they're like, yeah. They're like, can you read it? They're like, yeah. She's like, you know what I mean? I was always doing stuff that they couldn't. They didn't want me to do it, but they couldn't really stop me to do it because, like, I was doing my work. I just did it in block letters. Then I, like, wore my jacket all the time. I just wore the same jacket every day. Summer, winter, spring, I just wore the same jacket. Like, it was literally falling apart. I wore the same jacket. I was always a weird kid. And, like, the teachers would always, and, and to mom's credit, like, she never, if I wasn't, Doing it like if I was talking, she'd get on to me if I got bad grades. But the weird little stuff, she just like, he ain't bothering nobody. Let him wear his jacket, bro. Like, what are you? So what if he's sweating? Let him wear the, you know. So yeah, yeah. I was I I knew pretty soon and like once I went to school, yeah. Like so, my third grade teacher was like, you're just you're a little different. But I was like one of her favorite students, you know, because I, I did my work. I was my problem is I talked a lot. But other than that, I was respectful. I did my work. I was always a little different, though. On a given week, EB23, I pro I don't hang out with nobody. On a given week, when I'm not working somewhere, I might hang out with. Like when I was in Denver, on a given week, when I had my apartment, I might hang out with the most two people. Because my roommate, Cyan, we might hang out. And my friend Taylor lived downtown. So I, I might go see her for lunch or something. Some weeks, just one person. I might only see Cyan. So days like this, when I don't know anybody where I'm at, I hang out with nobody, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't really, I don't be, hey, great reset coming through. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, Super Chat Train. Thank you, thank you. That snuck that one in. I didn't see it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't really be hanging out with people. Right now, I'm hanging out with 217 people. Let's go. Uh, error. When I have a car, I take them to my seasonal job, but pretty much about half the time, I've been at seasonal jobs I didn't have a car. So 
either there was like some type of bus. Like when I worked in Big Sky, they have a bus to town. Because like when I worked in Big Sky, most of the time I was housed on the mountain and they had a bus to Bozeman. Um, or sometimes you just have to rely on people with rides, people with cars. Travel snacks is good. Leave me and her talk for like two hours yesterday. Two, yeah, a couple hours yesterday. That's the homie. Yeah, you know, one day I might drop that masterless bargain bear. One day, one day. Have I ever done a 90 day hard mode? I No, I don't know what that is, but I'm pretty sure I haven't done it. Sure, sorry to hear you had an accident. Sorry to hear you had an accident. Hey, the, you know me. The, hey, the blessings are are is is, is good. It's good. It's good. I, I appreciate you. I'm glad you're you're good. Glad you're good. Um, you know, glad it was a major accident. We we we're just glad you're here. And thanks, Miss Taffy. I, I appreciate all the love about you know just the the good positive feedback about the streams. Um, because sometimes I'm like, man. I want to stream, but I just did one yesterday. But hey, if y'all if y'all are willing to hang out, let's hang out. Yeah, Wendy, beaches on the in the off season. That's why I go to Myrtle Beach in the wintertime. Yeah, beaches in the off season. Yeah. I want to I think I want to try out some beaches like like the Gulf Coast, maybe next year. They probably got some beaches in Alabama or I'm almost scared to say it, Mississippi, that um probably pretty cheap during the wintertime. I like that, Chase, your first album, Introversion, not just because you're an introvert, but also because it was your intro debut album. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Hey, thank you, Lysol Bleach. Try to be relatable. Um, yeah, other people have, have said, Tim, I think you're Sigma. Um, you know, I, I don't really think I'm a weirdo. I, I use the term to, to just signify like, you know, I'm marching to beat of my own drum. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it seemed to me, it's cooler to say weirdo than like put an actual grown up label on it. You know, I'm weird. I don't know. Oh, Holly, this is, I'm in an Airbnb, so the, the, the art came with the, the Airbnb, you know. I own, like, no paintings. I don't even own any pictures other than the ones in my phone. Like, some of, someone was like, what do you, what do, you do with the, the pictures you have around your apartment when you move? I'm like, I don't have any pictures. They're like, what about pictures of you and your family? I'm like, and it hadn't occurred to me until then that, like, Oh, yeah, I don't have any pictures of me. I don't even have any pictures of me and my family on my phone. Like, I literally have no, I have pictures that, like, my sisters will send me of my nieces, nephews, whatever. But I have no pictures of, like, me with my family. Yeah. People are like, what? I'm like, no. And honestly, even if I kicked it with my family, I probably wouldn't have pictures. Like, I'm not a picture person. What up, Nick? Nick's a weirdo, too. You're a weirdo. I'm a weirdo. We're a weirdo too. Yeah, back in the day, they try to. They probably still do it. Put the kids on Ritalin if they was, you know, behave like we did or I did. Daniel, big sky in the building. How you doing? How you doing? Always good to see you. Uh, Iris, if if I didn't have my YouTube income, I do think I could survive between seasons with the money I make doing seasonal work. Because I would prioritize that. Um, when I first started doing seasonal work, I wasn't making like decent, like any type of money on YouTube. So it was saving. Like I would save, like my YouTube money I would save, the little bit I was making, I would save that. Um, and then I'd spent like no, that's why I always wanted to work at seasonal jobs where they have meals. So like, you know, I didn't have to spend any money because Whatever they the, whatever they wanted for housing and meals, they took it out my check. Basically, my whole check I could just put in the bank. Maybe keep out like I don't know if we got paid every two weeks. Maybe keep like a hundred dollars for like snacks over a two week period. But like, and I'll be getting tips. So 
Yeah, I would just like if I knew I'm going to be at this job for five months and then I'm not going to have anywhere to go. I know I need to find two months of like something to do. Then you like, OK, the, your whole time you're working, you're prioritizing saving. And then figuring out what you're going to do for those two months. So I think I think it's possible. I mean, I know a lot of people who do it, you know, and you can find there's some seasonal places that like have an off season, but you can still work it. So like a big sky, pretty much everybody leaves in the off season, but in housekeeping, at least you could say, Hey, I don't really have nowhere to go between seasons. Can I stay in like do deep cleans and stuff like that or help clean housing? I always did deep cleans in the hotel. And so you could basically work all year if you work the off season. So there's, there's a lot of different ways to set it up. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna one more than we're, we're timing out. Okay. Golf shores is nice. Okay. I'm I'm, I'm little to check that out. I want to check that out. Lee, hey, Lee, the streams keep you going. I I might stop. Um, I'm just, I'll just mess with you. Bro. I appreciate that feedback. Stay away from Texas beaches. What's going on there? Biloxi is nice. Okay, okay. There's a lot of cats in in, in, in Key West, like feline cats. Interesting. I don't think that's that's me. Uh, I don't think I ever got stomach ulcers from drinking. I've been, you know, I've got alcohol poisoning, you know, had a lot of other sicknesses, but I don't think I ever had stomach ulcers. Uh, normally at a seasonal job, it was 40 hours a week, like a regular job. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they're like, when it get busy, you might do a little more. There might be OT, but usually it was about 40 hours. It was just like a regular job for the most part. It just only lasted four months. You know, everything else is pretty much like a regular job. Error, ZTX. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat squad. That is love. That is love. Um, so thanks. You inspired me to get out of the rat race. Yes. I'm really tired. I can't leave just right now though. Best I can do now is gather, uh, I should know what that word, equanimity, equanimity, equanimity. Yes. Okay. Whoo. Whoo. Put me on the spot there. So ooh, I was, I was in the zone too. See how good I was reading the rest of that. Can't leave just drops. Oh, what? Okay. We got it. We got it. We got it. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. You know, and that's the thing, like getting a plan and be like, all right, I got to get about this rat race. All right. Can't do it right now but I can start taking steps right now for my exit. You know, I can't exit stage right, right now, but I can start shuffling in that direction. You know what I mean? So yeah, 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 yeah. Appreciate that love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, dreamy Roxy. Yeah, mud. I don't, I wouldn't want to deep clean as a cook. Oh, ooh, yeah. I mean, it was rough at, at, at housekeeping when they, one season they had us pull the black lights out. Ooh, no, 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 no. You do not want to 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 blacklight a room and then try to clean up what you saw on the walls. Some of that stuff been there for years. You can't do it. You or it takes like hours. Oh, the Texas beasts are just muddy. Oh, okay. What up, Jefferson? Sold your valuable items, including an $8,000 Star Wars figure, figure collection. Wow. It's crazy. It's crazy. You finally let go. Uh, I said, you're right. I feel free. One step closer to two backpacks. Hey, that's commendable, Jefferson. That's commendable. But, you, hey, you got you got your papes up. You got your coins up. You got your shacks up. You know what I mean? Um, that's, I, I know that had to be hard to do, though. You know, when you got a, a decent-sized collection worth a lot of money, a lot of pride in it. Um, can be hard to do, but then you like, well, look at the bank account now. Mm -hmm. And one thing I found is I take pride in some of the comic books I had, even though I don't have them anymore, I still take almost as much pride because I had them. I didn't think it would be like that, but like, I can talk about the books I had and I'm still like super hype 
even though I don't have it now. It's almost better because I had it. I still get that feeling, you know, and I don't have to lug the book around. And I sold it and got the money back for the most part. Um, I did lose money in my comic book collection. But you know what I mean? It, it's just weird that I'm like, I'm, I still kind of feel the same, even though I don't have it no more. That's awesome, Jefferson. Awkward is the weirdest word. That does seem like a weird word. If Yeah. To learn. Uh, 436. I never worked nights at a seasonal job. I worked nights in, in the real world before, but not at a seasonal job. Hey, Alf, Alford, Alfred X, Super Chat Squad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Say greetings and salutations, Tim, for the abundance. Hey, appreciate that. I appreciate the abundance. Thank you, Alfred. I've never seen it spelled that way. Alford. It's not Alfred, it's Alford. Two Fs. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Alfred. Appreciate that. Thank you. First, first super on a live stream. Yes, we're here. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat in the building. I appreciate all the support, ladies and gentlemen, fellow weirdos, introverts, lone wolves, lonely hearts. I appreciate the support. Thank you. We uh, Wilkins, good to see you. Yeah, Rochelle, I, I heard about here's my problem with the WNBA. First, I heard about the three-point contest between Steph Curry, Sabrina Unescu at the uh, NBA All-Star Weekend. I'm so hyped for that. I, me, me and my roommate, Cyan, last year after Sabrina Unescu just what hit like 36 threes in the, three -point the WNBA three-point contest, and like Steph Curry tweeted about it or something, I was like, they need to set up a matchup. WNBA didn't jump on it. Um they had to like do it themselves. And even now, you know, I'm subscribed to all the WNBA stuff. They're not talking about it. I should be getting an email every single day. So they're not. So I'm excited for it. Um, I wish there was another organization. I wish the, the leadership and the W was different because women's basketball is very popular now. You know, exhibitions like this are, are, are helping to make it even more popular and the number one women's league in America, at least, is doing a horrible job of promoting their product and their brand. So I'm gonna get off that. Uh, how would I how to start a page like mine? How would I do it today? Uh, like YouTube? I mean, it's I would probably do the same thing. I mean, you just make videos, like you know what I mean. I don't say that like tongue in cheek, but like really, YouTube. You have an ideal, some videos you want to make, you make them, and then YouTube, you learn as you go, I feel like. So that's why I'm always like, hey, get started. And like, because there's so much that like you can't learn through someone telling you, like you have to do it. So I think with YouTube, you start posting videos and you just kind of learn as you go and just consistency, like just keep going. If it's something you really want to do, just keep posting. Keep learning, get better at titles, thumbnailing, topics, like all that, like, you know, but it, it takes, I don't think you need to have it figured out, then start. I think you start, then you figure it out. Oh, Jamie, you trying to last connection? Nice. Oh, yeah, I can deep clean. I, I'm, in a good, I'm a good cleaner. Like, I'm a really good cleaner. But yeah, I can definitely deep clean. Yeah, I can definitely deep clean. But yeah, when you have to pull that black light out, boy, there'll be some. You'd be like, how did they get that? Yeah, 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 that was rough. Hey, Zoo, 84. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I should say your whole name. Zoropa, 84. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Cat Squad, thanks so much. So thanks for being you, Tim. Much love. Hey, you're welcome. And 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 this is the only person I know how to be uh, uh authentically. So, you know what I mean? I appreciate that. I'm I, I appreciate that being real resonates with people. Um, so thank you so much. Much love. It's love. It's love. Thank you. Super Chat Squad. Thank you. Abundance, bro. Abundance. You missing out. You missing out. Peace. Love. Light. 100. How you doing? How you doing? Um, which is something so to catch you up to speed. We just been talking about being weirdos, introverts, and love warriors. That wasn't on the list. I just added that in there. Um, we just talking. We just talking. Great Reese, you've been eating more wings and Panda Express. <laughs> uh, Ruby, I definitely think there are more good people 
in the world than bad people. If there are more bad people in the world than good, we would have burned this thing down millennia ago. I mean, just think about the average person you pass on a daily basis in the street. or like Most people follow the rules and just are going about their life. They just want to pay their bills, feed their kids, enjoy themselves. Even a lot of the bad behavior that we get in the world, I think, is good people doing bad stuff. Like I, a genuinely bad person, I think there's some people out there, you know. I don't want to say anybody's a bad person, but there are some people out there who don't care. But I think they're the minority. Um, I think a lot of people get pushed into bad behavior because of different stuff in life. Um, I think a lot of people we label as bad are just mentally ill and their mental illness manifests itself in like violence, you know? So like just a bad person, I don't think there's definitely not near as many as there are good people. I think they're, they're a minority, in my opinion. Panda Express is I, like I don't eat much Panda Express no more. I, I try to be at the real, I got Chinese food for dinner. I got general chicken and shrimp fried rice, I think. But um, yeah, I don't really eat too much Panda Express anymore. Adney says, the nice thing about living alone is being able to sleep in two stages, sleeping when you're tired um, and napping for the win. Okay, okay. Yeah, you live with somebody, they be trying to wake you up. Uh, Iris, what, if, if say I was to go back cleaning right now, because I've been off for a couple months, I would be hurting. When In October, when I went back to the Y, I was hurting. Like, I was putting the the heating pad on. I, I was a little nervous at first. Like, man, this hurt too much. But your body gets used to it. You know, your body gets used to it. Um, and I do try to stretch. Um, these, like, when I was younger, I just moved and picked up stuff back meat whatever these days i do try to lift with my knees all that other stuff they recommend i try to stretch um i try to be more deliberate with my motions you know when i'm cleaning uh you know i you know i, I try not to be on my knees as much as i used to be um you know you just kind of learn the stuff i didn't used to care like that but as i've gotten older i'm like nah bro you got to protect this body you know what i mean Did I choose jobs that don't require much socialization? I think Mystic, I subconsciously always did. Like, I like working by myself. So, like, I love being a housekeeper because, like, nobody really comes in the room to bother you, you know? So. <laughs> Great reset. You can go down there to Mexico, get that. Yeah, that, that was that was a good meal. That was a good meal. Main A, checking in from Houston, H Town. Yeah, like if everybody, if the world was, if people were as bad as people say, it would be nonstop. It'd be like the purge, bro. It'd be like nonstop murder, pillaging in the street. Like most people, you pass on a daily, like nothing happened, you know what I mean? It's like you go in the places where like the most bad stuff is going to happen is like bad neighborhoods or bad areas. And a lot of that bad behavior is a byproduct of growing up in poverty. You know what I mean? We, we, we have a system where a certain percentage of people are going to be in poverty sadly and then when they behave in manners that are byproducts of that poverty of the hopelessness of the hunger then we label them bad people but it's like if you took a lot of those same people and put them in a comfortable environment and gave them uh, the same education and gave them the same accesses to resource access to resources they wouldn't behave be behaving that way so we can't say they're a bad person when we they were raised in a bad environment, bro. You know what I mean? So like I look at that a lot. Like what makes people do what they do? As a, it's easy to just label people as bad person. But it's like they grew up in a food desert with no opportunity, no jobs. Of course they robbing people. Like 
you know, my thoughts. Jefferson, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat. Hey, man, the love is here tonight, folks. Thank you all, thank you all, thank you all. Jefferson, man, child, I appreciate the love. Thank you. Thank you. Alfred, coming through again. Yes, thank you, Alfred. Hold on, I'm giving you a like on that, giving you your love. Thank you, Super Chat. Are my elbows actually? Okay, I thought my elbows were actually. I was like, wait a second. Uh, <laughs> Super Chat Squad, that is love. So any advice for introverts when they start a YouTube channel? I think YouTube is great. Social media platforms are great for introverts because you can, like, everyone who knows me knows I'm an introvert, but all, people are always saying I'm not because they say I don't come across like that on camera. But even though there's, 231 people in the chat it's just me sitting in a room so youtube allows me to interact with people and get that that social interaction i need remember we talked about that balance of alone time interaction even though y'all are here in person i'm still getting the energy that love without having to be around 235 people because that i probably couldn't do so i think youtube is great for introverts um because it allows you, even when you make videos, like you get to interact with people in the comment section and you're getting to share your views, your thoughts, ideals in, in the video, you know? Um, so I think YouTube is great for introverts. It's, it's, I don't, I think sometimes people think, oh, I'm an introvert. I'm not going to be good on camera. I don't think introversion, either you're camera shy or you're not, but even with that, if you are, say you're, it's, it's your introvert, it's hard for you to be on camera. Um, repetition is how you get over that like you just get on camera more and you know the time comes when you've done it enough and the world didn't end that you're just like okay like uh, you know you get more comfortable on camera you get better at it, it doesn't bother you as much so i say if you're, if you're thinking about doing youtube once again make a video post it see what happens and then just keep making it um like i said you might find that it's 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 a good fit for you because it allows you to yeah get some of that social interaction you need. Hey Jefferson Manchild coming through again. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Super Chat Squad. Thank you, thank you, Jeffs Jefferson Manchild. Thank you, thank you. The number one fan. I like I like the pair. I like the pairs. I thank y'all so much for the love. Seriously, thank you. Uh, Patrick, yes, I'm I'm really live. Um, yes. Uh, peace, love, light, one hundred. I do not watch Ninety Day Fiance. I don't really watch any, like, I like watch, like, Amazing Race, like, those type of reality shows. Um, I'm not big on the romance reality shows. Just, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, since I'm single, I feel like if I ever want to get in a place where I'm like, oh, woe is me. I haven't met anybody. is when I'm watching, like, rom-coms or dating shows. So, yeah, I'm not really, those aren't really my type of, you know, shows. Oh, Mister, you turned on higher paying jobs because you had to socialize. <laughs> You're like, no, nah, I want that attention. I'm good. I feel you. And that's smart, like, to know yourself instead of just be like, oh, that job pays a lot. I'll take it. Be like, yeah, it may pay more, but I'm not going to want to be there. That's smart. Know thyself. I don't think people are only good because of the ease of life. I think people are naturally good, you know, and you have to putting them in bad situations brings out like the bad. That's just, that's my view. That's the way I view it. What up, Michael? Michael C. Ooh, I like that. Introverts get more energy being alone than being with others. I like that. I like that. Add Nate. See you later. Enjoy your sleep. What do I think about insurance? X. Oh, what type of insurance? What type of insurance? Yeah, bargain. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't... Dating shows, all that just kind of makes me realize I'm single. You know what I mean? If I just watch regular TV, you know, I watch Amazing Race. I just like, oh, I want to go there. Um, but yeah, whenever I watch that type of like dating type content, when it's over, you're like, oh man, where's my bachelorette or whatever, you know? <laughs> where's my 90 day fiance? Simi, thank you, thank you, thank you. Coming through with the Canadian cast, the international super chat squad in the building. Let's go. Thank you, Simi. Thank you. Thank you. So you're number one. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate the love. Thank you. 
Uh, oh, you said insurance in general just seems like a scam. It, it is one of the only businesses where you pay for the service up front, and it's a service you might never use. So Warren Buffett talked about that one day. He's like, that's why he owns insurance companies, because it's one of the few places that the people pay you up front for a service they may never lose. It's pure profit. It's pure. If I pay to my car insurance, I never have a wreck. It's pure profit. So. I could see some people thinking it's a scam. Yes. Yes. Totally. But, you know, the law says some of it you got to have. So, you know. Apply for Survivor? Nah, I couldn't. I couldn't do Survivor. Like, I would love to try Amazing Race. I would love to try Amazing Race. But Survivor? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Miller, you like the show Ex Expedition Bigfoot? Have they found them yet? My question with the Bigfoot shows is, how do they have so many of those shows, but they haven't found Bigfoot? They've been having them shows for decades. Has anyone found Bigfoot? Like, I don't understand. Maybe I should watch them and see the see why people love them. Um, but I'm just like, isn't somebody like, when are they going to find him? When are they going to find her? It's been 20 years with these shows. I don't know. That That's my question. Jonas said, what would you say are your vices? Um, caffeine. Um, and honestly, at the moment, that's pretty, that's, that's like the only one. Honestly, at the moment, had another one I was working on. We were doing great on that. So like, honestly, like, I drink more caffeine than I probably should. Like, I'm being legit. Like, I don't, like I said, I had another one I've talked about before, but we're doing good on that. So, like, I don't, I don't think I need to mention it at the moment. Um, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not in the bathroom right now, uh, Michael. Um, yeah, I mean, we, I really don't, you know, I, I, I really don't have too many vices no more, bro. Like, I don't do much. I don't do nothing, you know? John, what up? Would I go on naked and afraid? Nah, nah. The, 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 it's not the naked part that gets me. It's the afraid. Um, nah. Hey, Jefferson said, you actually saved my life, Tim. I was on a job site drowning in debt a couple years ago. And I YouTube search living with bad credit. Your posts have, have, have given me hope. Thank you, man. You're welcome. You're welcome. Glad to hear that story. Glad to hear that. Glad Love stories like that. Glad to hear that. We here. Making a difference. Yes. 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 That, that means a lot. That means a lot. Yeah, in some companies, yeah, you pay all that insurance, and when you need to use it, they're like, ooh, we don't cover that. I do have to say, I've had State Farm car insurance my whole adult life, except for like six, two months when I was in North Dakota. I used Progressive. Every time I've had an accident, I haven't had an accident forever, but when I was younger, every time I've needed State Farm, they they paid out. So I do got to say that like State Farm always was there for me. I can't even hate on State Farm. You know, every time I was an accident, every time they needed, they were supposed to pay out, they paid out. Like, that's why I never leave from State Farm. Jefferson Manchild coming through again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate the generous support. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're here. We're working. Oh, that's a good question. The spell said, with all the drones and technology, why can't flat earthers show the edge? That's that's deep. That's deep. It, I know what they'll say. Oh, they, they, they're they suppressing it. I know what they'll say. Oh, people's court with Judge Wapner. Oh, you went back, Rochelle. I forgot about Judge Wapner. A girl with pearls. Uh, you said I struggle with mental health and can't seem to shake it. Any suggestions that help? I I don't feel qualified to speak on mental health. Um, honestly, you know what I mean. Like I think I I, I you know what I mean. I think there's people who that's what they do. Um, I I know for me when when I had like my depressive issues, things like that, and I think time had a lot to do with it. But you know, little stuff like I know for me, like things that help my mental health, meditation being in nature, talking with loved ones. But beyond that, I really don't. 
I don't know. You know, I don't really like to speak on things that I know I'm woefully unqualified uh, to speak on. But sorry to hear that. Hang in there. Hang in there. And I do think there are professionals out there that know more than most of us. But th- that that is the issue I think with mental health is like it's it's one of one of our biggest struggles now. I think just because it is so hard to. It's the mind is so unknown, you know, that that's not to it's not hopeless, definitely. But like, I think it is one of those things, one of the issues that I'm hoping as the years go by and we realize how big a issue it is. We really start working more on under, you know, trying to understand and help people, you know. Women's basketball is not a vice. No, no. Women's basketball is not a vice. No. I started making videos, Jonah, just because, like, surprise, surprise, I just want to talk. Like, you know, I think my first videos, I think, were comic books. And it's like, I saw people making comic book videos, and I had some comic books. And I don't know, like, something was just like, ooh. You know, there was no thought of having a channel. There was no thought of making any money. There was no thought of community. It was just like, you know, I thought YouTube was basically like Facebook with videos, you know? So I'm like, all right, I'll talk about these comic books. Like there was no, it wasn't really, it wasn't a long thought out process because YouTube, when I started over 10 years ago, wasn't YouTube. It was just like another new social media platform, what just with video. So, it, it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like asking people, like, why'd you post on Instagram for the first time? And it's like, my friends was posting. I just, you know, I just came around. I was like, all right, I'll do YouTube, make it, you know. It wasn't, never thought it would lead to what it had led to, you know. I'd love to be in a State Farm commercial. Uh, Caitlin Clark does State Farm commercials now. I'd love to be in one. Uh, Michael, I had a hamster. When I was younger and I forgot to feed it, so it died. And then right around the time when I fractured my neck, I had this big idea that I was going to like breed rats, like little white mice. So I bought like five mice or something. uh, And then I broke my neck and I I fractured my neck, excuse me. So I I had to go stay with my mom for a while because she looked after me and the mice ate each other. So um <laughs> both I feel bad about that actually like that's wrong like both times I had rodents vermin as pets they feeding them was a problem so that let me know and I had a cat growing up you know but other than that no like the family had a cat you know Oh, uh, Lysol, I don't I don't think you're if it's hard to find a one of the hardest things to do is to keep yourself motivated to find a job when you've been trying to find a job and can't find one. As someone who chronically quits jobs, you know, there's been times where I was, you know, in between jobs really looking and it was hard. It's hard. It's to, to get motivated to do that every day. That's when I just had to start setting a number. I'm gonna put in 10 applications every day. And if I can't find 10 jobs I want, I just need to put in 10 apps. Like, like I just, that way it could be turned off. Cause it was either like if, if when I, when I didn't have a set number, it might've been five, some days, 10, whatever. If I gave myself a set number, then I was done. A, it made sure I put energy towards finding a job every day, but also there was a done. It's like, oh, I put in my 10 apps today. I can relax. But if I didn't set a number, I always was like, oh, am I being lazy? I could be, you know, I'm eating lunch right now. I should be looking for a job. I should, it was, you know, it was just too much. So I was like, I just set a number. This is how many apps we're doing every day. Boom. And I usually found I got hired soon after that. Um, Oddly enough, you know, so yeah, that's one of the hardest things to do is to stay motivated to get a job when you can't find a job, like when you've been trying. Crystal's vlogs. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super chat squad coming through, showing love. Say, hey Tim, what happens? Do you do you replace with drinking? So like when I stopped drinking, what did I start doing? Um, is that what you're asking? Honestly, I didn't. Here's the thing with me: I didn't really change my life at all when I when I stopped drinking. I continue like other than like 
and by the time I stopped drinking, I had really stopped going to bars and partying. So by that time, it was mainly, you know, just drinking after work. Get home, hang out, drink some beers, eat dinner, drink some beers, watch Netflix. It was basically after after 5.30, I was drinking until I went to bed. So when I stopped drinking, I just, I did exactly the same stuff. Hang out, eat dinner, watch Netflix, whatever. I just wasn't drinking. So for me, I, I didn't change anything. I just didn't drink, you know, and and I do understand when people say, "Hey, switch up your habits," but I I, I just for me, I, yeah, I just, and that's what was so hard because everything I did involved drinking. So for a while there, that's why I made that first sobriety video. It's like I, it's too boring because like everything I did involved drinking. So I'm like, how can I watch a movie sober? And it was weird at first. I'm just sitting there like, this is so boring. But over time, it got normal. I guess my people say my dopamine levels leveled up. I don't know. But um, I didn't really change anything. I just did all the stuff I always did without drinking. My longest period of isolation? I don't know. I don't know. I have lots of periods where I don't really interact with too many people other than like people at the grocery store or at the coffee shop. Rose, I haven't had kombucha in a, in a minute now. I don't think I've had kombucha in, it might be going on a couple weeks now. Yeah. Uh, Ruby, never fasted, try to juice cleanse, nah. Nah. I did like a one day fast or something one time. Recently, I was like, I'm not, I eat dinner. I was like, I'm not going to eat till I eat dinner again. That's a big fast for me. Um, yeah, Caitlin Clark's in a couple of State Farm commercials. Yeah. Usually when I'm on YouTube TV watching my sports, I skip the commercials. But when it's Caitlin Clark, I watch it. Love me some Caitlin Clark. Love me some Caitlin Clark. Uh, Ashley, um, when it comes to a job, I try to, the, for me, like, I know I like housekeeping. Like now, when I look for jobs, I look for like housekeeping jobs. So I, I just kind of find something I'm good at these days. I find something I'm good at that I know I kind of like, you know. So it's been a while since I had to be like, do I want to make more money? Or do I want to do something I like? Because since I started this lifestyle, all I've really been doing is like housekeeping. And I know I like it. Before that, I mainly did lawn maintenance. And I know I like that. So I, I really haven't had to make that distinction much. Um, though I will say for the right housekeeping job, I would take less money than a situation where maybe I'd make more money, but I didn't think I would like it as much. Like I've taken houseman jobs or house person jobs, which is basically, you know, you're the runner, you pick up the dirty linens, you help people out. I've taken jobs doing that, which pays less when there was like housekeeping supervisor or housekeeping management positions, because I was just like, I don't want to deal with the stress. Because they literally will be like, you got, you know, management experience. We got a system manager position open. I'm like, no, I'll be houseman. They were like, really? I was like, yeah, I don't want to. It's like, it's more money. I'm like, I don't want the stress. Like, so yeah, sometimes I'll prioritize less stress over money. I'm which, I mean, you got a point there, Sean. The world might be a better place if there were no buildings, businesses, man-made time, money. It might be. I'm always saying our ancestors were so, had so much less stress. Oh no, see the, the 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 fractured neck and the rats before it, it just turned out that like a few weeks before I fractured my neck, 
I had this big ideal about breeding rats. But when I fractured my neck, I had to go stay with my mom. And so I couldn't take care of the rats. And so they ate themselves. That's the correlation. I fractured my neck. I had to go stay with my mom. I couldn't take care of the rats. When I got back, the mice, excuse me, when I got back, they had like eaten themselves and were skeletons or whatever. So that's the correlation. DBH said, what are you running away from, bro? Uh, you got to do better than that. You got to do better than that. After, after 10 years of living this lifestyle, almost 10 years, I've heard that a million times. So, um, I, 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 you know, hit me with something harder. Hit me with something that, you know, is going to make me, you know, think. Or <laughs> uh, Saul, I, I was this fellowship or kicked out of being a Jehovah's Witness. I think I was like 20 and it was because I was having sex and you can't do that. So, yeah. Like I always say, I got no ill feelings against the organization. A lot of people do. I don't. If I had to go back and be a kid again, I'd want to be raised exactly the same way. Uh, I got nothing negative to say about it. I just, yeah, like, they was like, you going to keep having sex? And I was like, yep. And they was like, well, we got to kick you out. And I was like, all right. So, you know, that was that. <laughs> it sounds like a rock band. The Fractured Neck and the Rats. Hey, Mystic, you love housekeeping? Yeah, I like housekeeping. Like it's like pe like it's hard work, but like it's it's pe you know you it's peaceful. It's simple. You get your cart, you get your list, you clean your rooms, you go home. Once I got into like housekeeping management, it's which is still cool. I like it. I loved it. But like, there's always something. When I was a housekeeper, I just had to worry about my rooms. You know, my ten rooms, whatever. When you're a manager, like there's all even a supervisor, there's always something. Always something. They constantly calling you about stuff. It's just like, man, I just want to go back to my cart and my rooms. Do popular loaners qualify in this chat? Yeah, come on in. Um, Spencer, I think we all have thoughts that we'd be like, why did I think that? Um, I think that's just part of the human condition. The question is, like, where do those thoughts come from? And for me, I'm just like, I... I don't beat myself up when I have a weird thought that I'm like, well, that's crazy. That's not me. Because obviously, like, if it's not me, then why do I beat my, why do I care? But obviously it kind of is me, but it's not me, me. So like, I just, if I get some weird thoughts, I'm just like, whatever. I suppose before I'd be like, why would you think that? Now I'm like, bro, like, whatever. I'm just like, well, you know, so I don't even sweat them, you know? I think we all have thoughts that just like pop in our head sometimes. Just whatever. I don't know why. Just stuff we'd never do, stuff we don't want to think. It just happens. You just I just let all right, whatever. For some reason, a part of my brain wanted to put that in front of me right now, but I don't have to engage with it. Like Do I like ramen soup? Um, not when I got money. When I'm broke, oh yeah. <laughs> But I never, I had like ramen, like top ramen. I don't really let a ramen soup like from the ramen restaurant, no. That wasn't a big thing in Florida, you know, growing up. Um, Do I feel that a lot of other people who are living transient lifestyles are running away from something? No, no. Um, I don't know. Um, I think there's a lot of people living stationary lives who are running from things, you know? Um, I think no matter what your lifestyle, you could be running from something. And I think no matter what your lifestyle, you could not be running from something. So, you know, I don't think just because you enjoy traveling and being a nomad that you're running from something. Because my question would be like, what are you staying for? You know what I mean? You could equally ask that. If someone's not a nomad, you'd be like, why are you staying here? You know? Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't, people just do what they do. People enjoy, some people like being in one place. Some people like traveling. There doesn't have to be 
some underlying negative thing. You know, like it's just, I just like to travel. Like not to mention too, I know that when you travel, you take your issues with you. So like, even if I was trying to run from something, it would still come with me. Like you can't run from your problems. Like you, you can't. Only problem you can run from is a location specific problem. And I don't really have a lo location specific problem. So like some nomads are probably running from something, but like, I don't think most of them are. I think they just like traveling, you know, and my opinion. Yeah, ALR, uh, you know, like, if, and, and I used to let the thoughts bother me, because I'm like, well, I would never do that. Why would I think something like that? Until I realized, like, that's just human, that's natural. It happens to all of us. It's not like you're a horrible person. It happens, like, it's not like you were sitting around watching something, and then the thought came. No, it was like out of nowhere. You're just making a tuna sandwich, and you're like, ooh, what? It's just part of the human condition. And once I just start dismissing it, it don't bother me now. But when I used to be like, where did that come from? Why? Then I'm all wrapped up in it, you know, but I just dismiss it, bro. Like, I don't got to do it with me. You know, uh, that's, that's the other part of my brain or whatever. Shout out, shout out to your husband, Ashley. Yeah, I mean, when I have like no responsibility and I like to travel, why would I stay in one place? Just so people wouldn't say, I'm not running. Hey, Bonilla, 420, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad, thank you so much. So Tim, I like uh, it myself. I like it myself to not drinking. To, I limit myself to drinking twice a month, but I wake up with guilt the next day. The next day, can you relate? And how do you handle? Um. I would say this, if, if you're doing something that you don't have to do and it makes you guilty, could you just stop? You know, Th that would be my, and I appreciate the support. Thank you, Super Chat Squad. That would be my thing is like, instead of spending time and energy trying to figure out how to get over the guilt, could you just stop? Then you wouldn't feel guilty, you know? Problem solved. And maybe that's where the guilt's coming from because deep down inside, you kind of know it will be better to just stop totally. So, you know, maybe you just, all right, I'm just gonna not even do the twice a month. Then problem solved. Uh, Spencer, yeah, it's hard to be alone sometimes. Like I said, I get lonely sometimes. Um, I try to just like loneliness isn't the end of the world. It can feel like the worst thing, but it's just like, if someone's like, you want to be lonely or starving? I'm like, give me that lonely. Give me some more that lonely and some food. Um, but you know what I mean? So I just realized like sometimes in life, especially a lifestyle like mine, I'm going to be lonely. Um, and if the day comes where, and, and in those moments, I try to busy myself, reach out to friends. If I'm around somebody, you know, um, I, when I'm, when I'm making travel plans, it's not always possible, but I like to be places where I know I have somebody to hang out with. Um, but you know, sometimes it's, you get lonely and sometimes, yeah, you miss the, the physical connection, but it's something that like, you can't make it happen unless it's going to happen. So I just try to handle the, the time when it's not happening and I'm really feeling that, you know? Hey, Adriana, thank you, thank you, thank you. Adriana Zolo, thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad in the building, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate the love, Super Chat Squad tonight. Uh, if I could have a long dinner and a convo with any human in the history of the world, who would it be? Probably Alan Watts. Off the top, off the dome, probably Alan Watts. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably the Alan Watts. John coming through. John's a normal dude, but I appreciate you still coming through.
Yeah, Ace, like nobody's got life figured out. You know what I mean? Um, if, if you see somebody who thinks they have life figured out, that's 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 one of those all moments for me. You know, you see, see a kid do something cute, you're like, oh, that's how I, when someone's like, they got life figured out, I'm just like, oh, they gonna learn. That's cute. You think you've got it all figured out. That's cute. You gonna learn. You know what I mean? Um, so like, yeah, I, I, it doesn't, you know, and once you realize that too, it's hard for anybody to come at you or come for you. Cause you like, none of us have it figured out, bro. We might've figured out things that work for us. We might, you know, be, you know, over time, got some wisdom, some understanding, but nobody's got it entirely figured out. And here's the thing too. I was thinking about this the other day. This literally, I was in bed the other day. Life is about staying between the lines, okay? Life is about, it's like driving a car. Life is about staying between the lines. You learn to drive at like 16, but that doesn't mean you can get in a car, put it in drive, hit the gas and just go. Like every time you drive, there's new obstacles. There's new things you have to deal with. You have to stay alert at all times driving. You know what I mean? I learned to drive at 16, 17. I'm in my 40s now. I still have to stay alert every time I drive. There's always something new happening. The same is true with life. Like, even though we kind of learn how to live over time, you know, and, and like you're learning stuff about life, you're incorporating in your life, you're getting better at this whole life thing and living, you still have to like adjust and, and do different stuff because there's always new stuff happening. It doesn't matter if you're 18 or 80, you got to keep it between the lines constantly. So there's no, like people think they got to figure it out. It's like, bro, you haven't even seen what you're going to go through next year. You haven't even seen the stuff you're going to have to struggle with five years from now. As we get older, as the world changes, whatever, like things change. Like how can I, how can you know, how can you have it figured out? It's constantly changing. That's life. You just got to keep it between the lines. You got to adjust. You know, like it's, that's all I'm saying. That. Uh, John Kearns, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Super Chat Squad. Thank you so much, John. So thank you, Tim, for how you encourage us. Hey, you're welcome. Uh, and and it, it is my pleasure to put out a little motivation, a little encouragement from time to time. Um, and, and if you're getting something from it, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Thank you, John. Thank you. Super Chat Squad. Yeah, I like that car road analogy. That I, when I, when I, I was like, I like that one. You can write a song called Tim the Traveler. Now I don't know if I'm saying that. I don't know. Uh, Ruby, I did not go to college. So, yeah. Yeah, you can't. Like, how could you figure it out? Chew boy got your license today. Congratulations. Congratulations. Go get some more freedom. Yes. Perfection is impossible. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We're going we to move that comment. Thank you, uh, 985. Thank you. How long is too long living with your people, like your family? I don't think anybody can say like if you if you if your family's cool with you living there and you want to live there, stay there. Like that's a very Western American concept. I think that like at a certain age you have to move out. Nah, stay up when you want to stay there. You know why? Why would there be a time when you need to leave? You know you start you you want to get on your own. Cool. You want to start a family. Cool. But until then, even then you don't have to, but like until then, like, why would you leave? Typically it's cheaper to stay at home, you know? Now, if your parents are like, hey, we've been waiting 18 years for you to get up out of here, this is different. But if they're like, it's your room, stay in it. We're not going to do nothing with it. Why would you leave? You know? Big J Boogie checking in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Super Chat Squad in the building still. Thank you. So it sounds like you got to figure it out, Tim. Adjust when the fun starts. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, I, I feel like you can, yeah, you can figure some stuff out, but I don't think you can ever figure out life. You know, you, you might be able to figure out certain aspects of navigating it, but I don't think you can. I think the moment you start thinking, oh, I got this figured out, that's when life will be like, oh, really? Hey, hey, bring that up. <laughs> life will hit you with just that regular stuff. You start talking about you got it figured out, and you know life will be like, hey, uh, give me my bag. Give me, give me my bag. I got something for that. So, like, I'm, that's why I'm like, hey, I don't know nothing. You know, I got some experiences. I got a little more experience than I had, than I had in the past. I like to think a little more, you know, wisdom, knowledge, but like, I don't know. I ain't got, nah, this, the, the, yeah, life will, life will show you. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll see you're figured it out and raise you by like a thousand, you know, it's crazy. The universe has a sense of humor. I firmly believe. Uh, funniest thing I've ever found housekeeping. Uh, yeah, Ruby, like I was, I was saying this other day, basically all you're going to find is like drugs, weapons, sex toys, you know, poop, blood, you know what I mean? Like there's really not, it seems like there'd be all kinds of, but it's really, it's really either going to be sex toys, drugs, or like weapons, like, you know. That's the only kind of weird stuff people leave in hotel rooms, really, I think. Uh, Gratitude Gorilla is over there. Oh, Michael, it, it is. Actually, I don't. I'll wear a pair of hiking boots to till I need a new pair. My regular shoes, you know. I'll usually get a new pair before they wear out. Like my hiking boots will wear out, you know, because I like, you know, you pay a couple, you pay 120 some dollars for a pair of hiking boots. You know, I don't be trying to buy a new pair. Um, but my regular shoes, I'll usually get a new pair before they wear out because I, I have them because I want them to look nice. My hiking boots, I don't care how they look. They just need to, I'd be able to hike in them. Unity, we here, we are here. <laughs> Texas Hanks is so all good stuff, Yvonne. You know, just be that that random stuff. Spencer, I've walked in on people in rooms many times. Um, that's just par for the course. Because, yeah, you you knock, hello, people don't answer. You know, you walk in, they in the room. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah, that's regular. Like, But you learn to, like, ease into the door. You know, if, if, there, if, it was, if it's a hotel room that has other rooms, you knock on every door. You knock on the bathroom before you walk in. I mean, I've I've walked in on people when people told me to go in the room. Hey, I'm about to clean this bathroom. Sure, go in there. You walk in there, there's somebody in there. You know what I mean? So like it's that's just part of housekeeping. Like, yeah, it's gonna happen. Um, yeah. Lou Kang, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate the love. Super chat squad. So Tim was inspiring. Just have watched your move out video from 2014 and to see you're at now. <laughs> yeah. Been tough the past few years, but your words have lifted my spirit throughout the year. Fist bump. Boom. Glad to hear. Um, been able to give your spirits a little lift. Sorry to hear it's been rough. Um, hopefully these next few years will be amazing. You know, went through the rough ones. Hopefully we get into the good ones. Um, yeah. Even for me, like I, when I was watching that video to see if I want to post it, I hadn't seen it in a while. And cause I think it was on my other channel. And it was just really cool to like see that to he, you know like this is what I said I was gonna do and I did it. That was pretty cool to see Tim who didn't know all this was gonna happen or where his life was gonna go, but he was just like, "This is what I'm trying to do." And I was like, "We did it." You know what I mean? Like that was a really cool feeling. So I appreciate you watching that video. And I appreciate the love. Thank you. I hang on one second, ladies and gentlemen. I, I will be right back. Okay.
We back. I'm gonna try this sparkling water. See what this gets. Us. Lost one. We're gonna see. Oh, 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 oh. It's, about to, it's about to fizz up. Oh, oh, oh. How you doing? Um, Michael, like the toys, I mean, you usually find them when people are still in the room. So you just have to kind of put them back where you found them. Um, the drugs, you got to, you you, you got to report them, you know? So if you find drugs in a room, the, the procedures, you got to report them. So don't touch them. You know, you just call security, you call your manager, they'll call security. They take care of it. So, yeah. But like the toys, I mean, unless they had checked out. But even then, you got to lost. If they checked out, you got to lost and found it. You know what I mean? But if they're still in the room, you just got to. I mean, you typically find them when you're making the bed. So you just have to kind of put it back in the bed. You know, it's not really a big deal. You just, you know, glove up. If you're making the bed and you don't have gloves on and you, oh, and you're going to move it. You just glove up and then put it under the pillow or something. I don't know. Wrap it in a towel under the pillow. Rick, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Rick. Super Chat Squad. Thank you so much. Um, 24 has started rough, uh, but you keep up alive. This is what we're doing. Sorry to hear you. 2024 started rough. It's only February, though. Plenty of time for it to turn around. Um, and, and that's the goal is to all of us keep a positive outlook, no matter what's happening. Be as positive, as happy as we can. Sometimes it's hard. It's not always necessary to be at a, a 10 of happiness. Sometimes all you can eke out is a three. But let's be at the three. You know what I mean? Um, especially in a world where people love wallowing in others' despair and their own despair. You know, let's see if we can be as happy as we can, you know. And I, I think that helps um, over time. You know, I think it helps in general. But like, I, I think it really helps to just keep that positive attitude, you know. Thank you, Rick. Simple Not Your Black Life, how you doing? Okay, that's a that's a weird comment. It's getting weird in here. It's getting weird in here. Uh, X. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna work a seasonal job this summer. I really don't. I really don't. Um, you'll notice I don't plan a lot. Like, thing, you know, I'll put in some apps, and if they call me with the right situation, I'll go. But if not, I'll figure something else out. You know, you know. Yeah, Mystic, them cash tips. When when I was there back when I was drinking, oh man, I used to get so much liquor as a you know, like when I worked at Big Sky, um, the the rooms I was working in were like they were like condominiums, and people would come and stay for you know four or five days, you know. So they the fridge would be full of stuff because people would come. They're on vacation, so they at the store just buying all kind of stuff, and like you can't take any of it with you when you leave on the plane or whatever. So there'd be all kinds of liquor and food. And I remember one time my boy Mike, friend of the channel, he's been on, he's been on the channel a couple of times. I remember one time we was like, we all just got together and we all brought over to his apartment all the food we found the last couple of days. And we, I mean, like we picked out, bro. Like nobody had to buy dinner. Like we everybody, it was we got so so full and so drunk, and we didn't pay for any of it. Because we would always do that, but we never brought it together in one place. And it was just a smorgasbord of like, it, it was crazy. Just because like it was stuff, like I like that because you would find foods you would never buy. A, because it was like expensive. But B, just like, you know, random cheeses and wines and foods. And it was so cool. Like we would just all grab, it was all free, so nobody cared. So anything you saw, you wanted, oh, give me some of that. Give me some of that. Give me some of that. You know, we were the reason we got so drunk is because we were mixing alcohols, but that too. But um, I just remember his whole table, his old kitchen table was just full of like free food. We were like, this is the best, bro. We are living the dream. <laughs> we were like, this, that's one of the days I'll never forget. We were like, this is like the best life ever, bro. We're in the mountains. You know what I mean? We, oh, man, we all got money in our pockets, free food. It was good. It was good. It was good. 
Good time. Shout out to my boy, Mike, man. That's love. Uh, Noman, I, I really been thinking a lot about the book thing lately, lately. Um, people, people have been asking me that a lot. So I'm like, is this the universe giving me the nudge? So I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Yeah. And it would, I could definitely self-publish. Yeah. Uh, Troy, I mean, I, 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 there's definitely been times when money was tight and I mean, what you do what you gotta usually for me like if money gets tight my spending lessens so we might not you know spend as much money on coffee we might not get as much doordash you know what i mean like it's just i have to alter my spending habits when money gets tighter yeah but you know we we uh we we, we used to that you know what i mean like that's as long as i'm able to make it i'm chilling you know you want to get back to being up, but like, it's just go back to gratitude. I'm grateful for the money I have, be able to do what I can do, you know? Not buy a lottery ticket, no, no, no. I, Silver Lumber, I have not been on a hike lately, I haven't, so. I mean, I did a lot of walking in San Diego, but I didn't go on any hikes, but I did a lot of walking in San Diego. Phil, yeah, yeah, you know, we've been going for a couple of hours. You, you a little late. It's all good, though. Q-Boy, the food at the seasonal job was usually part of the, the food that you ate every day. Like, your meals was part of the employment package. So they charged, most of them charged, like, a flat rate per day or per week for room and board. So your housing and your meals was... It wasn't free, but they took it out of your check before you got your check. So it kind of felt free because you never had to like pay it, you know. Definitely, definitely lost one. Um, YouTube sometimes is like therapy for me, literally, like just getting stuff off your chest. Sometimes you just need to talk about something, you know, and just the love and, 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 and energy I get back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do I want to visit Maine? It just looks beautiful. It looks beautiful. Uh, I had a friend who worked there. She said it was beautiful. Like it just, I don't know, something about it just appeals to me. There's a uh, there's a yacht club in Nantucket. That's not Maine, though. But I just thought about this. There's a yacht club hiring on Coolworks, and it looks like the rich people hoity hoity toity yacht club. And I'm like, I could go be a dishwasher there. It, I, I really feel like all my coworkers would be like rich 18 year olds. You know, their parents are like, walk her through yacht club for the summer. Uh, but I'm like, I might apply there. Just just because I know it would be so far out of my comfort zone. I'm like, I might apply there. Just to work at the yacht, the, hoodie, the, the, the fancy yacht club. Just to put myself in that situation. And I've always wanted to be a dishwasher, low key. I mean, Spencer, when you said it's hookup culture thing at seasonal jobs, when you got a lot of mainly, you know, 19 to 27 year olds in a, you know, environment where they are very close, you know, you gonna have, that's just human nature. Like when, you know, that's any situation like that. Seal, you're a child for your introvert. Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What would I say brings me true happiness? Um, I, I really feel very grateful to just be able to like live this life and experience the things I'm able to experience. Like, I'm very grateful for the life I have. And I think that gratitude leads to happiness. Cause like a lot of times we're unhappy because of what we don't have. And I think gratitude, commit, contentment, excuse me, when you're just happy with what you do have. Like 
I, you know, I don't know. It just seems like it's easier to be happy when there's when you don't need a lot to be happy. You just really appreciate like it could be so much worse, and I'm just appreciative of how it is. And then, you know, you're just happy to play the game. You know what I mean? And I think a big part of my happiness does come from being able to do a lot of the things I want to do in life. Um, I, you know, it, it most of the time, not all the time, I'll be honest, but most of the times it feels like I'm actually living as opposed to like just being alive. Most of the time it feels like I'm actually living. And I think that adds to, to your happiness when you don't just feel like you're existing and going through the motions, but you actually feel like you're living. That, I think, there's some real happiness in that. And it doesn't always have to be anything major you're doing, but if you're doing something that you want to be doing and you get to do that a good portion of your life, I think you'll be a pretty happy person. Because, you know, think about the things you do you you enjoy the most. Like, think about if you got kids, when you and the kids and your mate or whatever, you're all on the couch watching a show or something, enjoying yourself. You can't help but be happy in that moment, regardless of what else is going. You mean like because you're doing what you want to do. You, you appreciate that. So I think if we get to do a decent amount of those things in life, you're going to be happy even with other stuff happening. You know, Ashley, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super Chat Squad. Thank you so much. Thank you. First, super on the live stream. Yes. So for your gratitude and just being happy, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Like it's, you know, I mean, a, a big, a big reason I like doing streams and making videos and sharing this message is because it's one of those things of like, I didn't always used to be a very happy person. I used to be a very negative person, you know, and it's like, this is like game changing. It's like game changing to be in a space where like most of the time I'm pretty happy, you know? I got my ups and downs. I got my worries. I got my aches and pains. Oh, we have our aches and pains, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but if through all of that, I can still be happy most of the time and enjoy life and like smile and laugh. And it's like, bro, like, let me do what I can to kind of pass that along. Because it's like I said, it's game changing. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, I think that's why the womb to tomb, like, work so well because it's just like if I'm happy most of the time and all I got to do is just do this till I die like okay like <laughs> you know he's like oh okay I just gotta you know just keep doing this till my time is up okay cool you know so but thank you Ashley thank you so much I really appreciate that thank you thank you hey Lawrence checking in from Thailand Oh, the, the 10 reasons not to have kids made a lot of sense. That video, I'm glad to hear that. That video is still doing well. Like it gets, that video probably gets more consistent comments than any other video I have. Like people weighing in on that one. So, Nicole, six months ago, I sold my luxury car. Some of my friends think it's weird, uh, but it's been so freeing. I uh, wish you got rid of it sooner. Team car free. Let's go. Yes. Yes. That is awesome, Nicole. That's awesome. Appreciate you, you sharing that with us. It's possible to have a car. If you want a car, cool. But like we want to be team car free over here. And yeah, I would imagine, especially if you got like a luxury car to go to no car people probably like, I know they're like, oh, she broke, she did, she that. I, I if I don't need a car, it, it, it is very freeing. I tell you, it is so freeing. There are times you're like, man, it, it'd be nice to have a car right now, but there's always Uber, you know, there's bikes, there's scooters, depending on where you're at. There's public transportation, there's walking. There's walking. I walked to the store twice today. I walked to get my coffee and got some water. Then I walked to get lunch and dinner. Like, you know, that's awesome, Nicole. Appreciate you sharing that. You know, tell you the, the think about it, people. Tell you. Because, like, if you want the car back, you can just go get another one, you know? Austin said, Tim, what do you think is the right balance in between staying educated, knowledgeable, and ready for the future, but not stressing yourself out regarding politics and negativity? Um, 
I think you can stay educated, knowledgeable, and ready for the future without tapping into politics and an overabundance of negativity. You know, I personally don't think politics has anything to do with staying prepared for the future. It, bro, like they don't do what they say they're going to do. And if they do do something, you deal with it once they do it. If they if they pass a new law, what do you do with it? So politics, I don't, but I do understand that because sometimes I'll, for example, this morning I did a deep dive on like um, this new gambling stuff going on because I was curious. I wasn't planning on doing that, but I got caught up in it. And then I watched a lot of videos. I planned on this one. I wanted to look into like the migrant situation. Um, there's negativity surrounding that stuff. But it's something where I get in, I see what's going on, I do my research, I formulate my opinions, and then I move off. Like it's not something every day I'm gonna look at, every day I'm gonna be talking about it. I, you know, it's not gonna be a soapbox. I get up and you know, this is not, you know, it's just something every now and then I tap in, see what's going on, back out. And so I think it is possible, even with some negative things going on in the world, that you're like, hey, I might need to know about this to prepare myself. You don't have to like live there. You can visit those spaces, pull out. But some people just like, you know, they they come up with, they see something and it's all they talk about. And the, you know what I mean? Getting prepared doesn't mean I need to have to talk about it incessantly. That's not preparation. Getting prepared means learning about it, doing what you got to do. That's it. So that's kind of how I balance it is like, I don't, I don't need to live in that space. I can just visit, see what I need to do. And I understand, I, I saw your second part to that. It's, and once again, there are some things you don't have to engage, you know? There's some things like, if, if you hadn't watched that interview, would any of the things that were said that are bothering you like, can watching that interview, can you do anything to change anything he said? That's why I look at some stuff. Some stuff I just won't engage or watch because I'm like, no matter what happens here, I probably can't do nothing about it. So I don't always need to see everything. But sometimes if I do, in the course of my research, come across something that bothers me, I, I go back to that. Like, I can't, if I can't do anything about it, I can't do anything about it. It's going to do what it's going to what it's gonna do. And everything always works out for the most part. It all works out. That's what I just tell myself. Like if something I can't, is kind of bothering me, I can't do anything about it. I'm like, it'll work out or it won't. Like, <laughs> you know, but it, most things work out, but it all works out. So like, that's how I keep from just constantly stewing over stuff. It's like, it's going to do what it's going to do, you know? I can do what I can do. And then after that, I'm, you know, I'm done. Captain J train. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super chat squad. Always said always a powerful message. I appreciate that. Thank you. With the Australian dollars. Yeah. International super chat squad. International super chat squad. Thank you. Captain J train. Never tell you all the story about Captain trash. I think, I think I have told it. Some of y'all probably heard it, but when I used to do, uh, I was on like grounds maintenance right across the street from the, uni the University of Florida in Gainesville. There was like these luxury, I worked for a property management company and they had like 10 to 15 properties right across from UF. Um, and basically I walked around, picked up trash, the grounds, wiped the doors, you know, you just kind of, you know, grounds. Um, but there was a older guy and he always wore like a captain's hat. He was homeless, but not like he had apparently an apartment kind of, but I don't know. He looked homeless, but uh, he would push like a cart and he would go to all the dumpsters and he every day, like clockwork, nine o'clock, here come Cap, Cap Trash. He would go around to all the dumpsters and he was different because like he would get in the dumpster. Like most people would stand outside it. They He would get in the dumpster. He was like 70. Like he would get inside the dumpster. So you'd be coming up to like throw a bag. You, oh, you like you're about to throw a bag in the dumpster, you know, heave it. And you got to pull back his cap in there. 
and he'd be in the dumpster. He would be like looking through, like he would pick some up. He'd be like, hmm. Hmm. I'd be like, Cap, can you get out the dumpster? But he would be like, just put it like, like if you put it beside the dumpster, he would put it in later. And he was very respectful. You know, he would clean up any because he'd throw a bunch of stuff out and then he would either take it or he'd put it back in. He'd clean up. If you left anything there, he'd throw it in there for you. So, like, we liked him because, like, he never bothered us. You know, um, he would actually clean up, you know, but he always had that captain's hat on. He'd always be standing in the dumpster. I'd be like, why are you in the dumpster, cat? Like, throw it out, get out. Like, he would be standing, like, chilling in the dumpster. <laughs> but super nice guy. Super nice guy. That's one of those random stories that pops in my head. Something I want to accomplish that I haven't yet. Uh, I want an, a, a graded uh, Alana Smith 10. A graded uh, 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 Alana Smith rookie card. I want to own one of those. Yes, that's. <laughs> I thought about that today, because uh, Alana Smith is going to be playing for the Lynx now. So, um, and just me personally, something I want to accomplish. I want to go to Japan. You know, I want to go to London. Most of my goals are like travel. It'd be cool to write a book. You know, it'd be cool to write a book. Uh, no, Michael. Yeah, I don't forward. I have a I have a mail forwarding service that gets all my mail for me, and then when I want it, they send it to me. So yeah. Hey Jeff, appreciate you saying that. Thank you. But I took a job that made me pay for my own parking. Mm, I mean, if I was making enough where that that five to ten dollars wasn't an issue, maybe. But if that was too much of an inconvenience, maybe not. Still, you want to work in a different industry, but have it because of fear fear of failure. You know, I mean, I feel like you know the the, the solution here. Like, if you want to try hospitality, it's just going to take. You, I mean, maybe do a part time, you know, maybe take a part time job in hospitality and keep your retail job, you know, but it's going to take doing it like you. there's nothing that says you can't do it scared. There's nothing that says you can't still go get a job in hospitality while being afraid of failure. Yeah. And I think that's a lot of times we will try to wait for the fear to go away, but you can't just like I'm doing it, you know, just one day I'm doing it. I'm scared, but yeah, just you, you can just do it, you know. If you fail, you can go back to retail, you know. But yeah, it, it, it takes just doing it. And typically, once we do it, it's like, oh, what was I scared of, you know? Hospitality is a great industry, by the way. Spencer, sorry to hear about your friend Travis. Sorry to hear that. Um, friend of mine died from a seizure recently too. So yeah, I get that. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Sorry to hear that. Um, he said, I have almost no money. I'm completely happy just to wake up, see the, the daylight. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, that was one of the things that kind of it 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 put one of those events that put life in perspective for me too as well. Cause like he didn't make 40. So I'm like. I made 40 and then some. So like every day is a blessing. I know that sounds very cliche, but like there's some times when like it gets put in perspective and you're like, oh, right. Like every day is a blessing. Like none of these days are meant. So if I'm, if I'm waking up and I'm healthy, uh, 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 80% healthy and I got money to buy food, I got money to buy coffee. I got money to pay somebody else to make my coffee. You know, like I'm great, bro. Like this is amazing. I may have my aches and pains. I may be going through stuff, you know, that 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 20 percent of unhealthiness I'm dealing with or whatever. Like, but I can get up, walk around, eat, you know, talk with my friends. That's amazing, man. Like, you know, so, yeah. And once again, it's hard to hear about your friend. I, I know that's hard. 
Uh, Crystal, I don't think I ever go to North Carolina. I'd be in South Carolina, but I'll never go to North Carolina. Prod by Massa. First time catching a live stream after years. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'll tell you, that title's bringing them in. People are like, I didn't know if weirdos was welcome. No, we all, we, I, we here, we run this. Hope y'all didn't hear that. My stomach is, whew. We just expelled some gaseous fumes. Hope y'all didn't hear that. Oh, John, you like the caregiver job? You like it? Nice, nice. Good luck, good luck, good luck. Glad to hear that, glad to hear that. Captain Kirk checking in from a security guard job. Oh, Kern. Oh, I, I, I don't know if sugar, could, if sugar should be considered a drug, but I, I think it's an addictive substance. I'll definitely say that. Uh, Rick, uh, I moved out, Ricky, I think at like 18, 19, but I, I, a couple of those years I went back home. But yeah, I've been, I moved out at like 18, 19. That only went home from rags to riches. Oh uh, yeah, I do. Um, I got a really good friend of mine. I won't say he was in rags, but like, you know, yeah, you know. And uh, actually, I met him working for him. He had just started a little lawn business with a ten-year-old mower, and they was financing one from the Home Depot. And and if we're being real, his wife's money was the one who was paying for it. Like he was, you know I me. Mean? Um, and now he's doing great. Like hard work, very intelligent man. You know, hard work, goals, dreams. Now he's doing amazing. Like his, he, yeah. We joke whenever I go see him, we joke about that. Like remember the the Troy built mower? Like um, he's doing amazing now. So yeah, I and and it's cool that I got to play a part in that story, working for him. You know, um, and running his lawn business for many years, but. I see him come from, yeah, yeah, like, funny thing is, I always have my money, I always, never missed, never, even the low times, like, I, and I've seen him go through ups and downs, like, it's always been like this, but there's been, you know, but he's doing very well now, so, yeah, yeah, that's, and I think about him a lot sometimes as motivation, as inspiration, like, oh, you see, you see him do it to him, like, so, you know, so, yeah. But with him, it was just hard work and believing in himself. That's probably the most driven person I know. Like, if he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And either it's going to work or it's not. But he's always thinking, you know, next next level. Leveling up. Let's go. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Usher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, Usher, you know. Sticking around. Oh, Nick, you told the job he's going to stay longer even though you're leaving. I mean, you know, you don't always have to. Yeah, yeah I mean, you know, no point in. Yeah, like they're going to get two good months of good work out of you. You know what I mean? So. Ruptro, good night. Oh, uh, yeah, that was in Florida. I mean, he just worked harder, you know, and hit, one of his things is like good customer service. Like he's he's a, he's a great person like that. And if he says he's going to do it, he does it and beyond. You know, he's got a, a great heart. So like he, he shows up, he does the job. Um, a lot of worked with a lot of elderly people, you know, gave them breaks like did extra stuff. Like we'd be more in the grass. He'd be in the house, you know, fixing something for him. They say, Oh, I'm gonna have to call. I'm gonna have to call the, you know, the plumber to come in here and fix it. He'd let, no, I got you. He'd go to the store, come back, fix it. What all you yeah, just give me 10 bucks for the part. You know what I mean? Like he just customer service, hard work, always, you know, even when people pooped on him and you know did him wrong, always been just like provide above and beyond, prided himself on good work. And as, and, you know, that's, that's rare these days. You know what I mean? So like you get a reputation for that. And like over the years, just people know if you want it done, call him. 
Like, you want it done right, you want it done on time, call him, you know? So, yeah. Oh, Miss Tall, um, I don't think there is such thing as foolproof birth control. Um, and I understand you got needs, you don't want to, you don't want to stay a virgin, but you know, there's risk with I don't think there's a hundred percent foolproof birth control, but like I think if you strap up, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Is 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 that guaranteed? No. But like but yeah, you know, you, you put two of them things on, you're probably good. Um, you know, but yeah, you, you're right. It, you know, uh, I don't know, young. Um, I think there are certain things that we are better suited for. You know, I don't know if I think it's we're destined for it. I think there's some things that we're better suited for. And if we go after those things, we'll naturally do better because it suits us. That's why I'm a big believer in learning about yourself, learning what you like, learning what you don't like, learning what you're good at, learning what you're not good at. And doubling down and going after the things you're good at, I think that you'll do better. Um that's why, you know, it bothers me kind of when people go for the job with the most money. I understand it. But like you might hate that job or you might suck at that job. Whereas if you find something you like or you find something you're good at, it's probably going to work out better. Um, so I don't know if I think it's destiny. You will do this. But I think there are some things that once you come across them, you realize like, oh, this works for me. I think sometimes that's when people say, well, that's my calling, you know, because like you're really good. If you do something and you, you get in flow with it, I think that's how you know, like, oh, this is for me. Um, I don't know if that's your destiny, but I think, you know, it's something that works very well for you. Keisha, how's it going? Um, I was never camera shy. So I've definitely got better at being on camera, but I was never camera shy. Um, you know, I just, I just wanted, I wanted to be on camera. So like just picked up the camera, but it never was like a, ooh. um, but I think it's just repetition. If you are camera shot, I think it's the same. It's just repetition. Uh, you, you get on camera, you post your first video, the world doesn't end. You know, the cops don't come over and arrest you for being horrible on camera. Um, and then over time, even if in the beginning, you, you don't want to watch it back. You know, one of the things that really helps you get over not liking what you see on, is editing. Once you've watched yourself so many times, <laughs> once you've edited enough video and watched it, you know, you just, it, it just becomes a non-factor, I think, after you've done a certain amount of videos. How many videos that is differs for people, but I think a lot of people, after a few videos, they're just like, all right, you know, th this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it. And like, you just get better over time. And the better you get, the less it kind of bothers you, you know. Uh, Michael, now I never thought about Uber because I don't want nobody in my car with me. I thought about like DoorDash, but I like I liked Instacart, you know. Bella, how you doing? Happy Friday. Oh, Jay Boogie, you got a, you got a child from Broken Protection? Oh. Oh, Mistle, you're a woman. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, like, I don't think there's a perfect solution. Like, you know, it, it's one of the things if you if you're gonna get certain needs met met, you gotta take certain risks. Like, I mean it's life, like there's no you know. Jim V, you use mowing you use mowing yards 10 years. Junior high to college? Yeah, man. Great job. Outdoors, different location. You know? Yeah, it'd be stressful when it rained. Like, for me, like, when it would rain, you don't get paid for that day. And then you got to, like, catch it up. Typically in a shorter amount of time. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah I love mowing grass. Uh, 
Uh, EB23, I think I answered your question. Um, I would have to go back and see what question you asked. Oh, Nick, you recorded your bus tour video today, kept getting camera shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just practice, Nick. Yeah, it's just practice. Yeah. And I mean, in the beginning, sometimes you feel weird talking to the camera, like, well, you know, but it's just, yeah. Hey, Keisha, at least you haven't fallen laughing at yourself. You know what I mean? At least you, at least you, at least you have fun laughing at you. You get some fun out of it. Hey, J, Big J Buggy, we're going to try. We're going to try. Yeah, Miss Talk, I think you'll have the opportunity and it'll go by, you know, if you if you protect yourself the best you can, you you know, nothing's foolproof, but you'll probably be okay. Like it's not millions of people a day do whatever, whatever, and don't have kids. Some do, but I think, you know, you know. And I, I feel like there's things you can do that might need get that need met, but you're not risking childhood, you know, there's third base, you know, okay, okay, we're not, there's a, no, it's kids watching, you're not, no, no, okay. I'm just trying to help people out. What up, April? Oh, how do I keep friends? Um, well, I, I, I don't really. I know they're asking how I keep friends. I guess by being a good friend. I don't know. Um, I probably hang out with my friends when when I live somewhere close to a friend of mine. Once every two weeks, my average friend once a week, once a couple weeks, once every. It's it differs depending on the friend. Um, I don't lose friends as an introvert because all my friends know I'm an introvert. So like, they, you know what I mean? Like it, it, anyone who's like, oh, Tim's an introvert. We're not going to be friends. I, I, I might not gain some friends, but I don't think I lose friends because everybody knows I'm an introvert. So like people know, like Tim just don't hang out that much. So like, you know. Oh, I don't know how many fights I've been in, Mo. Uh, a lot of the fights I was in, in school, I think I was in one. And that was like elementary school. Um, and I lost. But I didn't get in trouble for my mom because he had said something about my mom. And so that's why I tried to fight him. And he got the better of me and I fell down and it was over. But once I got grown and started partying and hanging out, we was, we was fighting all the time. So, But I was usually drunk, so I don't really remember. You know, yeah, there's kids watching. I can't, I can't say what I was going to say. You know, it's kids watching. You got you never know. Highlight of this week for me, uh, probably talking to my friends on the phone. <laughs> you know, that was really fun. Notre Dame lost, so ugh. I'm trying to see if there's a game I really liked. Probably yeah, talking to my friends on the phone, you know. X, I talk to my dad a lot. I actually need to call him. I talk to my dad pretty regular. Um, me and my mom don't really talk, but I talk to my dad pretty regular. So yeah, shout out to pops. Super Bowl plans. I was going to go somewhere and watch the Super Bowl, but I saw that you can watch it on Paramount Plus. So I'll probably just watch it at the house now. Like, you know. Uh, you know, Nick, people ask me that, like, deep down, what was the reason you drink? Um, and maybe there are some people who have, like, this deep down, uh, whatever. I, I like getting drunk. You know what I mean? And maybe. And of course, like I do think the drinking made me 
think less about certain stuff in life, but I just like getting drunk. I like getting drunk. I like the feeling I got from getting drunk. I liked that, like I could talk women to women better when I was drunk. Like I like being drunk. Um, I, you know, I don't think everything has to have some deep psychological meaning or reasoning. I think sometimes we just like doing what we do. We like the feeling it gives us. I like getting drunk. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's something new and so, well, maybe not new, relatively new. To where like everything has to have a deep meaning, bro. I just like getting drunk. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, yeah, yeah. For me, I'm a simple person, man. Drinking made me feel good, so I drink. You know. I'll probably skip the halftime show. You know, I really ain't trying to see Usher. Respectfully. Then again, I might not even watch. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people link drug use to alcohol and unresolved life issues, but like all of us have that. And some people don't turn to drugs and alcohol. So I the, that would imply that like the people who don't turn to drugs and alcohol have resolved all their life issues. We know that's not true. So I think we all got all that stuff. We all got the same stuff on some level. And do some people use it to 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 cope with that? Yeah. But I think some people just like to drink. Some people just like to get drunk, get high. You know what I mean? You know, I, I don't. I just don't explain it all the way that way. It, it seems very modern to try to, oh, we need to come up with the reason why people do it. Sometimes people just do what they do. Why do people lie? Some people are liars. You know what I mean? Why do people steal? Some people are thieves. Some people, there's a reason, yes. But some people know, like, everything doesn't have to have a deeper meaning, I think. Um, but, you know, that's not a good TED talk. Hey, I want to talk about why people drink. Some people are just drunks. Good night. Okay, Corey Cometh, Friday night, you're not drinking. Nice, nice, nice. Glad to hear that. Yeah, Big J Buggy. I know all about that. They play that footage back, you know, the next day or whatever. Embarrassing. Oh, I know all about that. Ricky, these days I prefer a calm life. Like, I'd be, I'd be chilling. Like, we had our fun. We, you know, I like a calm life, man. I don't know. I'll be honest with you, Nicole. I have I have some Usher stories, not me, but people I personally know, but I'm not messy, so I'm not going to share them, but not not a fan, respectfully, you know, not against them. But from the from when I lived in Atlanta, I have some Usher stories that I'm just like, ah, I really rock with that dude. Uh, but, you know, I'm not messy. I'm not going to tell him. Jeff, you said a pint of Hagen Dazs, vanilla chocolate chip. Okay, a pint. Ooh, well, the pints, that's not thats not too crazy, is it? <laughs> Shortest TED Talk ever. Facts. You know, yeah, just... And, and one, one of the... Piggybacking off that, I think we've gotten, because I think that leads to like a victim culture. Everything that's going on in my life is because of something. And so I think a lot of times that leads us to, instead of just being like, I need to fix this, we try to go back and figure out why we do it. And, and then it becomes that instead of just fixing it. Now, if there's something you do have to go back and figure out to fix, cool. But I don't think everything is that. But these days, it's like, oh, I do, I do this because this, I do this because that. Everybody feels like a victim. No, nobody. Like, it's like we're not putting our big boy pants on no more and just being like, no matter the reason, I have to fix this. And then if I want to figure out why I initially started, if there was a reason, cool. But it's just like. We're just everybody is 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 like oh it's not me it's it was this it's not me it was this 
it's not me. That's almost like, it's me, bro. I just want to drink. I just got to drink it. You know, um, I just see so many and people have the right to not judging people. But like, it's just like we're, we're, we're a culture of victims now. Instead of being a culture of like resolvers. Hey, I got this problem. Let's fix it. It's all like, oh, it wasn't my fault. It was this. It wasn't my fault. It was this. You know, I don't know. I just. Michael, I never wanted to use hard drugs. Never, never. Th that's what's crazy. I don't care how out of my mind I was drinking. I never wanted to use hard drugs. I would smoke a little weed, you know. Like, I didn't even do, like, coke or nothing. And, like, I have very friendly friends. So they always be like, hey, whatever they was doing, they offer me. We got, we got X, we got pill, whatever. I never wanted to do them. I don't care how drunk I got. I never did them. There was two things I never did. I never did hard drugs and I never went into my savings account. I would spend all the money I had on me and stop. Like I know th that's how I know, like there was always a part of me still there, even blacked out, whatever, doing craziness. I never went into my savings account and I never did hard drugs. Would I do all kinds of other foolishness and craziness? Yes. But like now, a couple of times when I was at the strip club, I went to my, my savings account, but that was that wasn't the drink. That was the, the women. But like just drinking, we'd be we'd be so broke and wanting to get drunk so bad that we would be drinking. People would get up to go to the bathroom and we would drink their drink. People would leave and they'd leave like this much beer in the bottom of the. We drink that. We'd be begging the bartenders for beer. I would have money in the bank. I would never. Never, never use my ATM card or nothing. Like, proud of myself of that. Uh, Jeff, all the people in my life who are really in my life, I trust them all. Listen, I don't have a, I don't have a large circle. There's very few people in my life, but everybody who's in my life, I trust. Like. Everyone I call a friend, I trust. Like, for real. Like, like if I didn't trust them, they wouldn't be in my life. So. Bryson, um, I don't know where I want to work next. I'm not even sure, you know, when I'm going to work next. So I'm not sure. I put in a couple apps recently, but we'll see. I actually had an interview the other day, but I turned, I turned them down. Um, but. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Jess, I see you. I see you. That that comment's even more funny now that I see it was you who said it. Yeah, man. There was a couple times, man. I, and that didn't happen much. Usually, like, I would go with, like, I'd go to the ATM beforehand and get money. But like, there's a couple times I I went to the ATM afterwards. Like I'm like, hold on a minute, I'll be back. That type of stuff. And you know the ATMs around strip clubs usually ain't the one you trying to need to be in at night, or the strip clubs I was going to. Like I'm out here looking crazy in these neighborhoods at the strip club at like 1:30 in the morning. You know what I mean? Like in hindsight, I'm like, bro, what were you doing? But like in that moment, I was just like, I got to get me like four more dances. Like, I'm like, I got money in the bank. Bet I'm going to go get another hundo. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. You know, as crazy as it was. Um, yeah, solid investment. Like, I ain't mad about it. I ain't mad about it. Not at all. Like the next day, I might have been like, bro, like we don't do that. But like now I'm like, bro, like it was. You know, I, I respect someone who's so good at their craft that they made me do something I normally don't do. They didn't rob me. They didn't. But she was just so good. I was like, I need to go get more cash. You know. But yeah, no matter how drunk I got, I never like here, here's the <laughs> here's my story. My buddy I was telling you about earlier um, with the with the very successful business. So. When I was a, uh, when I was the uh, crew leader, he would give me like a hundred bucks.
for gas and stuff. Or he might give me like 200. And basically that was for the week or until it ran out. So if he gave me like a hundred bucks by like Wednesday, I might need more money or Thursday. Um, so I always had, and he did that too. So like if I'm out and we needed oil or gas or anything, blade, anything, like I always had some money on me. Um, and I would, I would spend that, <laughs> but I would tell him, I would tell him like, I'd be like, Hey, cause we kept it running. Like we always, always handed, gave him a receipt for everything. And the receipts always added up. So like, say I had like 40 bucks on me and we went to the bar. Oh, I'd blow that 40 bucks of his money. I'd blow it. But then I'd tell him that a Thursday morning or Friday morning, if I was too hungover to go to work, whenever I went back to work, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be like, Hey, I had 40 bucks of your money. I blew it at the bar. And he'd be like, okay. And he'd write it down and he'd just take it out my check. Um, so I would do that a lot. Especially if it was like Thursday night and we only had to work one more day. Oh, his money was gone. <laughs> like my friend, my buddy Andy, shout out to Andy. He's moved on to glory now. Shout out to Andy. He would be like, you got any of his money? <laughs> I'm like, man, I can't spend it this week. He, but an hour or so later, I'm like, man, we're spending it. But I always was honest. Uh, he didn't care because he just took it out my check. So it was less money he had to pay me. So. I'm like, yeah, man, I blew sixty eight dollars. He'd be like, what are y'all doing up there? I'm like, we getting drunk, bro. But um, yeah, I always kept it. Never stole from him. Always told him. He never minded because, like I said, yeah, he didn't care about the money. But um, he always got it back too. But yeah, we blow through that money, boy. But never one of my same, you know, never on my same account. Graham, yeah, it's a longer stream tonight. Um, uh, I'm about to wrap it up here soon. But yeah, we we going, we going. Mud, y'all used to be addicted to the, the stripping clubs when you were in the army. Yes, yeah, weird. There was a time in my life like that was that was all I wanted to do. That was where the disposable income went. Like I I you know. I worked at UPS one time and there was a club called, I think called Bikini Beach. You had to pass to get to work. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, there was a couple nights I U-turned and called into work sick and went to the club. Like I was on that type of time. Now that's so crazy to me. I'm like, why? But at that time, like, yeah, it was a couple nights I drove past. I was like, man, screwed in boxes. Yep. I went right up in there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but now it doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't even, like, if I had some friends in town and they're like, let's go to the strip club, I might go. But, like, now it doesn't, I don't, yeah, like, what's the point? It was a good investment at the time. Now I'm like, me. Eh. Best place I've lived? Uh, I don't know if I can say, if I can really rank the places I lived. Like, I don't know if I can say one was the best. And when it comes to making friends, I think it's not... I don't know if there's they could ever make a list and be like, it's better to make friends. You can make friends better in Detroit. Like, I think it's just kind of luck of the draw. You know what I mean? If where you go, if there's people you could be friends with. What up, Tyler? Tyler. Bikini Beach, I think. Not Bikini. Bikini Beach, yeah, I think. I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to respectfully, Ashley, I think that's another example of we try to just look at a group of people and write off why they do typically when it's something we wouldn't do. I, as someone who frequented a lot of establishments like that, I do not believe that most of the people who women who worked there were abused or had something like that happen. No, no. Some people just want money. You know what I mean? There's a lot of money to be made, you know, as someone who routinely, you know, took girls up to the strip club to apply. You know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of strippers. No, no, no. I'd have to respectfully disagree. Um, everybody doesn't have the same hang ups about certain stuff. So, like. If, if I don't care about that and I need to and I'm looking at jobs and I'm like. Why would I go sit in this office for 30000 a year 
when I could go do this, which might kind of be fun for 120,000 a year. It's math, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, once again, I think we, we just love to blanketly say people do this because of that when we're all different and we all have different reasons for what we do. And like I said, it's typically it's something we wouldn't do, so we judge it. Nobody says that about the stuff they do. Oh, all the people who sit around and just watch football all the time, they must have these type of problems. No one says that. You know, so, yeah. Sorry if I got a little. That's one of my, you know. I know a lot of strippers, so I had to weigh in on that one. Sorry. Sorry. It's just like people, all the all the women and, and men on OF, people always got like stuff to say. Like, bro, some people just, some people don't, it's not a, it's nothing wrong with it. And if you don't see it as anything wrong with it, and you see the money people are making, people do it. Like, I don't know. I don't know. What up, uh, baby uh, Khalil? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just don't, I don't like. I'm not friendly. Like I'm introvert, so I don't want to drive, be driving people around. Having to, like when I'm in the Uber, I love talk to the Uber driver, but I don't. I wouldn't want people in my car sitting behind me. I'm, you know, nah, 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 nah. I, I'm, mm -hmm. Nothing bad or good, but thinking makes it so. I agree with that, Ricky. Totally. You know, and, and I think we're good at putting our, like, I have my moral code, but I don't put it on nobody else. There's things I won't do, but if other people want to do them, like, I don't care. Like, they don't have my moral code. There's some stuff I don't do that people pick on me about it. You know? It's like, I just don't do it. Not judging you for, you know, whatever. Stuff I do, people, you know? Like, but we're we're good at like that's wrong. Anybody who does it must be messed up. It's like no, they just want to do it. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the, we, we we're ending this up on an interesting, interesting topic. It all, but I feel like when we go like three hours, it always gets spicy. Hey, Crypto Pimp, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Super Chat Squad, thank you so much, Crypto Pimp. So good evening, Tim. Here's ten dollars for the hotel room fund. Hey, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, that hotel travel fund, that hotel fund, we can use that. We can use that. Thank you so much for the continued support. Thank you. I should do food delivery on an e-bike or scooter. I mean, sound like I would rather just ride the scooter. Yeah, let's ride the scooter around, have fun. Rick, I think some criminals know they're criminals. Like, I know some criminals who know they're criminals. And sometimes they're like, yeah, I need to stop. You know what I mean? I think some criminals don't view it as wrong. But I think some criminals know. But some don't. And, like, who am I to... Are they breaking the law? Yeah, but I can't say that's right or wrong. I can say it's wrong for me, but, like... I can't tell a bank robber he's wrong for robbing a bank if he thinks is right in the grand scheme of things. Like, you're going to go to prison if they catch you, but, you know, I'm just glad my money's insured by the NCUA, you know? That's the National Credit Union of America because I don't do banks. I do credit unions. They're like, what's the NCUA? They do banks. I do credit unions. There's a difference. 
If you know, you know. Um, I, I have ever met a psychopath. Not a word I would use, but yeah. <laughs> Not a word I would use, but yeah. You know, yeah. I've met some people that I was like, yeah, they definitely don't see the world the way we see it. Um, that person, yeah. That person, I'm, yeah, uncomfortable around because they would, yeah. I've met, mm, I've met, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, I met some people that I was very nervous to be in their company because I, I just knew it would not have bothered them to do me harm in the slightest bit. They just weren't doing it at the moment, but it would not have bothered them to do me slight the harm in the slightest bit. And that's a weird feeling to know, you know? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we just hit three hours. I'm going to go ahead and jump off. Um, I got to get some din din up in me. You know, your boy's stomach's over here growling, having a little gas situation going on. <laughs> thank y'all. Thank, thank y'all so much for tuning in. Hey, big shout out to the Super Chat Squad. Huge shout out to the Super Chat Squad. Thank y'all so much. Shout out to all the weirdos, lone wolves, uh, 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 and introverts out there. This was a great stream. So many people came through. The numbers were great. The likes were great. We had a lot of good conversations. Um, I thank y'all so much for being a part of this community. Um, shout out to the first timers here, the lurkers as well, the usual suspects. Uh, these streams mean so much to me. And thank y'all for supporting like these regular streams. We're going to keep doing it. I might take a day off tomorrow. I don't know. But um, thank y'all so much. Love y'all. Love each and every one of y'all. Prayers. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your night, your evening. I'll talk to y'all soon.